All right, I'm here. Hello, how's it going, everybody? Woo, my. There's a new setting apparently in living. Li yeah. There's a new setting in mobile live streaming apparently that I just learned about trying to start this stream today. Surprise. Okay. <laughs> how's it going? How's everybody doing? Woo, I was getting super angry at my phone there for a second. What is YouTube doing? Let's see, should we do a pop collar stream? Probably not. Alright. Hello, all of you that are watching. Thank you for the likes. Let's catch up our diorama. Uh, earlier this week, I did a members only live stream where we just talked and hung out, and I blackwashed the diorama. And, well, no, actually, I toilet papered the diorama, and I blackwashed it the other day, and I painted the rocks. And I'll go over that with you guys uh, here, too. But thanks for coming back. Uh, trying to get this diorama wrapped up in this stream and the next one that we're doing uh, so we can get to the giveaways, the new channel changes and announcements, and the next live stream dio. Uh, so we'll be uh, having all that happen in the next couple of weeks. So uh, lots of cool changes. I've discussed a lot of those with the channel members already. But uh, rather than taking forever to talk and talk and talk and talk, let's get right into it. Um, I have a giant mess I haven't cleaned up because that is my life. So welcome to my mess. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> All right, mess. Okay. <clears throat> so I painted the rock formations. Where's my camera? There we are. I painted the rock formations um, to my liking. So what we did here was I did a metal. I did a thin metallic undercoating. And then I did a dry brushing of a medium blue, and then a dry and then a wash of a light blue. Actually, I did the washes twice, and the second go, I put some brush strokes in it to get sort of a metallic space rock feel to it. And it's going to look different in different lightings. Um, I uh, I was kind of messing around with uh, direct and indirect and soft lighting just to see what it would look like. You can see there. You can see the detail when this gets like studio lit by a photographer, um, or if I actually decide to do some real photography with one of these, it's gonna look really cool. So this is kind of designed to be lit. It's not necessarily designed to be in bright sunlight as this is an alien world. So normally I design my dioramas to look good. If it's a normal human world or like Tatooine or something to look good in bright, bright sunlight uh, so that it can be, it'll look good in any situation. But this one I'm kind of deciding to look good when it get uh, and when it gets lit, so yeah. Um, let me just uh, clean up a little bit of my mess here. This is some of the remnants of my washes. It's a really pretty blue. Makes me want to drink it. Don't drink paint water, kids. And I was just testing the rock to see what it looked like because I went with a sort of a richer blue on the rock, but I wanted the the um, the stuff we created on the first stream um, to to look like it was. Uh, chipped up and sort of gravelized and it may, may have been chipped off this rock and, and it had been tumbled in the weather and then it was placed with the landscaping of the scenery, something like that. So I was doing some tests and so we did the toilet paper texture method on my member stream, which you can go watch in my um, space bamboo diorama video. If you have not seen my space bamboo diorama video, check it out because I go over this entire method in the video in detail. But it's just uh, toilet paper, Mod Podge, water, um, and spreading it all over the diorama uh, to your liking to get a really, really cool earth texture, uh, which I'll show you here in close-up. See that texture? And I sprinkled a little bit of sand and a little bit of gravel, and then we're going to add this over it. That's not glued down yet. That was just to do a little visual. But you can see there's a lot of different tones of pinky, purpley, blueies, metallicies in those rocks. And I have been going back and forth about what color I actually want to do the ground in. And I think I finally decided, I was looking at color wheels today, like actual color charts of complementary colors, trying to figure out if I wanted to go complementary opposite or complementary same tone or do something wild. I was like, I was even thinking about a rainbow diorama, like where every single color is different for each object, but they're in a, like a value range that works together. Um, but then I was like, nah, that's a little bit too wild for this. Maybe for the next one, I'll do something like that. But I think I settled on purpley, dark purpley to violet earth with tones of red and the blue rock popping up through. I think that's going to look really cool. And it will also complement 
uh, or support the purple and white tones we did in this. And then the green tubing uh, and the green highlights on the electro on the uh, mechanical stuff is what's going to what's going to stand out. I think that's what I'm going to do. If it looks like crud, we can always repaint it. It's not a big deal. Like to to one repaint, you know, you can you can paint over a texture like this like once without ruining the texture. So we'll see. I, I try not to do that. And I glued down a bunch of hexagonally shaped tiles back there uh, that I had left over from my Bat Cave diorama that I made like three years ago, which is the premiere video on my channel. So if you go to my channel's landing page, you can watch part one because it's a three part series, technically four if you include the electrical video, because that was kind of part four of that. But the three part series on building a giant miniature Bat Cave playset, uh, I used hexagons on the floor of the Bat Cave. And these were leftover castings I did because I actually made my own tile and my own dump mold and made cast tiles. And I had those left over. I was saving them for a project and apparently it was this project. So, flashlight. Um, this is my wash that I made and there's, I made way too much of it. So, you know, that's kind of just like a thing I do. I make too much of a wash. I'll set it aside. I might decide to use this on, on the rocks again later. But, oh man. Let me uh, just clean up my space a little bit here so that we can actually do some work. These are amazing little tools, by the way. You can stab them in foam, clip stuff into them. I forgot why I got these out, but I'll put them away and then I'll remember and then I'll get them back out because that's what I do. Let me, uh, you know what, let me make this more entertaining for you guys here. I'll actually put myself in the frame while I clean up and talk instead of make you wash my hands while I clean up and talk. All right. Would you like a cup of blue? Oh boy. Man, stuff is everywhere today. All right, so <clears throat> these were the paints I used on the rock. It's, uh, they're all cheapo paints because I love cheap paint on foam, but those are the paints I used on the rock. Um, you can do this, if you, you can do this in any color, if you just go with uh, metallic, uh, like light, light solid color and then a lighter color of the same lighter tone of the same color excuse me so you go purple green black whatever you want black and gray you know silvers and blacks and you could still do the same thing so it's a fun way to make um metallic looking stuff sort of spacey looking haven't been able to use that in a while so i'm glad i found a use for it on this diorama let me just move over this is the toilet paper that we used on the members only stream doing this whole thing in toilet paper and uh, I got all my blues out because I wasn't sure which blues I wanted to use but uh, some of these are drying out here so I'm probably gonna have to pick up some new blues but I like to store my paints upside down like this so I don't have to look at the caps I can just look at the colors from the bottom and kind of pull a few out so just a little tip there some people like to store them like this like this they like to put the paint on the cap I tend to like this. I just like seeing the sea of colors. It almost look, it looks like a like the selection of paints at Home Depot when I open my paint drawer. Um, so anyways, I just like doing that. And I think it's going to look cool because a lot of these characters, another reason I went with blues and bluish purples is I think it's going to complement the characters that this was designed for. So like we have Vorga here. She's got blues and oranges and reds in her, and I think she's going to fit nicely into the scene. And then we have Kragnar, who is orange, which is a complementary color of blue. I think he's going to look really cool in this scene. Obviously, it's far away, but I think it's going to look really cool in this scene once everything's actually assembled together. I think they're going to stand out, but also blend in. So, uh, yeah, wireless mic would help really good, but I'm operating off of an iPhone right now just because I'm super low tech because that's what I got to work with. And what I'm doing already like overheats my <laughs> my iPhone sometimes so I probably need to get uh, a better setup of course but I'm working on that but if I, I'm afraid if I got a wireless mic it might drain my battery even faster than live streaming already does I have to have my battery like fully charged or almost fully charged before I start a stream because once I get about two hours in if I don't have it plugged in which I do right now um I will my battery will get drained in like um like like an hour and i have to plug it in so the live streaming really just eats up that battery and i feel like adding a mic would do it faster so thank you for the suggestion but i think i'd have problems with that at the moment yes i'm feeling a lot better today thank you i i got a haircut too 
and I'm lost 20 pounds and I'm working out. So I actually feel like a functional human being today. The exercise is paying off. More on that in a future video. <laughs> Getting old and having gout and slight scoliosis. Yay. All right. But enough about me. Hopefully you guys are having a good week. <clears throat> Somebody just bought something from my Etsy shop. I just got an alert. Cool. You know what? I should probably put my phone in focus mode really quick. Do not disturb. There we go. Now that no, I just remembered somebody could call me right now and interrupt the stream. So we don't want that. Um, let me just move some of this around. Looks like I murdered a Smurf. Okay. Bring this forward, and we're gonna do a bunch of random things today. We're gonna paint the ground here. Actually, on a two, I thought about um, for these hexagons, I might paint them the green color or paint them like a silvery black and then put some green or, or bright colored resin in between the hexagons to make it and put some, I have a bunch of cool uh, metallic uh, resin powders I have barely used. So this would be a fun project to put them in. And I want to, if you overuse them on something like this, it can look kind of weird. So I think it would be fun to use them just in like one area to do like a little highlight. So if I use the, uh, I have Total Boat Clear Resin that I use uh, for certain things. Um, I might get that and get out some of those, me some of those uh, metal flake powders and do a resin pour on these hexagons. Maybe today, probably next stream. So I'm just going to get these blue rocks off of here. And I need to blow my nose. I think I... Allergies are happening. Excuse me. Mm. Exciting booger-based content. Okay. <clears throat> also clean. Oh, you know what? I cleaned my truck today, and I used Lysol disinfectant and a bunch of cleaners in my truck. I think they're just my body's still getting them out. <clears throat> oh. Close up. I like the way this one turned out a lot. Uh, the lighting is kind of dim on that, but I really like the way this one turned out. It's got like, it looks like it's it's got a, a look to it where you can see like the base mineral in it, but it's been chipped away and weathered. So it just, this one, I feel like even though it's like sort of hyper colored, it looks the most real. I went over rocks a lot with my members uh, on the first members only stream we did the, earlier this week. And, uh, I got really inspired to try to make this feel uh, minerally. So, you know, thank you to the members for joining me for that stream, by the way. So they know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Let me figure out how to collect this efficiently. Probably a piece of poster board, or I could just use this binder really quick. Just get these rocks. Okay, there we go. Put these in here. Oops. My blue kitty litter is going all over the place. There we go. That's okay. I made more than I needed. I can lose a little bit of it. All right. So you can see there's a little bit of flecks of blue and stuff on here from me painting the rocks and putting them down before they were cured. But you can see there in the lighting how much texture I got out of that. This is nothing but toilet paper glued down with a Mod Podge water mix and a little bit of sand and a little bit of train set ballast pebbles I like because I just like the size of them. They're wonderful for 112 scale small rock. And where I did the path here, you can see there's a distinct texture kind of like from here coming around and back. That's the sort of pathway where in between that goes around this pump. And so, and I, I, I stuck my rocks and different things into uh, the toilet paper so that it would create these sort of divots. You can see the divot here. So I knew where to place my rocks back and possibly build up around them. I haven't decided yet. But I'm just going to do some touch up here on these black colors um, and then we can actually add color like 
you know you've done a good job with texture if you've painted it one color and you can tilt it in your lighting and see all that texture. That, that's how you know that no matter how you paint it, it's going to look pretty good. If you tilt it and you don't see much, I mean, maybe you're going for that. I don't know. Maybe you're going for a subtle texture. But when you're going for like a rough texture, but that's small and you can see it, like that you can't see. But as soon as you get an angle on it, it's all very visible. So that's, I'm very happy with the way that turned out. I love this method of texturing for, for like, you know, basic earth textures. It, I have never not liked it. Um, I've never not liked it. So, and then uh, I added the, uh, the sand and the gravel right into the toilet paper as it was still wet. So I didn't have to add it as another layer after it dried because that, that's just unnecessary. Larger pieces you should probably glue down, but we're not going to do larger pieces. The kitty litter is going to be the larger pieces for this. And the flock, I'm still figuring out how to place it and where to place it. I think I'll probably figure that out probably towards the end of the of the diorama, just because it's kind of a, it's meant to be a fill-in uh, color and texture. So I'm not too worried about that. But let's go ahead and do some touch-up here. And uh, let me put you guys in here. You guys can have the dio cam today. The in dio cam. have a good view here there we go that looks pretty good all right so with dioramas like this um when i did this i put i just squirted paint all over this and then got a wet brush a wet chip brush and just went over the whole thing and then squirted more paint directly on it rather than separating the paint on a palette. It's just faster if you're doing one color. Uh, just a little tip if you're new with this. Just something you can just take the, take it like this and just squirt it all over, you know. And then get a really wet brush and then move the paint around. It's way faster. Um, especially if it's a flat paint, it works really fast. And what am I getting? I'm getting a brush. So, in this case, I don't want a very wet brush because I don't want this to take forever to dry. So, I am going to use a palette because I'm just doing touch-up. That should be enough for now. And um, I need a paper towel to dry this off. So just gonna get some of the moisture off of this. A little bit of moisture is okay, but I don't want a ton. And I'm just gonna get a healthy amount of paint on there and do some touch-up. Just wanna get rid of these blue flex because I don't want blue showing through my purple in these areas at least at the moment that's not my goal so this where there's a lot of sand texture um if you guys can see this there it is where there's a lot of sand texture here um uh my brush brush bristles don't want to get in there uh because of the texture this is where I'll wet my brush just the tip of the brush in my dirty paint water and I'll just go like that and it gets the paint to bleed into the texture so I don't want to do all of it like that because I just don't want that much water on there but <clears throat> that is what I'll do in these heavily textured spots stipple and then just kind of spread it around some of these lighter spots like over here, that's actually where a rock is going, so I'm not worried about that. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you guys collect 1-6 scale figures, but uh, Terry Smith, who works for Sideshow Collectibles, just started a new Facebook group called The Poser Posse. And uh, he welcomed me into it and a bunch of other wonderful people and people that have YouTube channels and such. You guys should go check it out. He's, uh, you can only post licensed figures, but it's all about posing figures. And um, so anyways, I do a lot of that uh, with some of the figure reviews I do and the dioramas I do. So if you guys are into that sort of thing on Facebook, go check out The Poser Posse and Terry might let you in. <laughs> Terry's a really nice guy. So you've probably seen his channel too. He's uh, one of the guys who does a lot of the posing or did a lot of the posing um, for Sideshow um, 
collectibles in the past, he would do those figure posing session videos. But now he kind of does it on his own as far as the posing goes. <clears throat> but just something cool to check out. Just throwing that out there. Give Terry a shout out. Terry's a nice guy. All right. I think I got it all. Oh, now a little bit over here. Get all the texture. Every time I see a fully painted black textured diorama like this, I really want to do like a lava diorama. I've actually never really done one. I've messed around with little samples, but I've never really done like a full lava volcanic diorama. And I've seen some people that I do know are subs to the channel and uh, have taken some of this stuff and already done it and done an amazing job, but I like to do my own version of that eventually So maybe maybe someday I'll do like a Mustafar Or maybe I'll just make a volcano or something for the fun of it. It doesn't have to be Star Wars themed, right? Just something fun. I see you guys commenting here. Hold on a sec. I just want to Do this here just to make sure I think we're good yeah, that's good. Okay. Let me flip this around and see what you guys are saying really quick. Hello. Oh, hello, everybody. Hey, everybody, for being here. Channel members, too. Fat Red Foo, Troy Dodson, New Future Customs, Well, Fishnet, Nightwolf3176, Duffman Dioramas. I know I'm not normally live on this night, but I wanted to make up for being a little bit behind the last two weeks. Fine Tip Creative Studio. What's up, guys? Hey, I met them in Vegas at the InArt event. Those guys do a lot of cool unboxings as father and son, so go check them out if you're into that. Let's see who else is here. I'm sure I missed somebody here. Hold on. Michael Dumas, I'm glad you could make it. Michael's always going, when is your stream? I'm glad you made it. <laughs> Thank you, Hellcat. I appreciate that. Uh, ba -doo -ba -boo. OG Zombie, I'm glad you learned something. Thank you. Yep, that's what it's here for. Jeremy, new member. I don't know what that is. Sorry. Did I miss something? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Let me let me get some color. Well, I'll take you over to get some colors, but <clears throat> just want to show you guys these rocks again really quick. But they look different in different light here. So you can see... I tilt it around. We've got a little bit of an iridescent effect that actually comes from on, on purpose. There we go. There's some like little minerally lines I did there. Uh, on purpose, I did the bottom layer of metallic really thin over the pink foam so that the pink would come a little bit through the blue and create almost a rainbow fish effect, like a silver, uh, uh, like a silver skin effect or like a a fish scale effect that's very subtle. I don't want it to be crazy because I don't want light going all over the place. You could do that if you wanted to, but I just wanted it to be subtle and I think it's a little hard to see on this camera, but it, uh, when this is done, I plan on taking really nice photos because I get in such a hurry when I finish a diorama and I ship it out or I put it away or whatever. And I don't have the patience to sit down and like set it up and light it and take nice photos, but I need to do that. I have a very nice DSLR camera that I don't use enough. so. When I'm done, I'll probably change the first thumbnail of this stream uh, to the finished image of this diorama with nice lighting. And uh, hopefully the person who's interested in this will be able to get it when we're done. And they can take way more amazing photos with it than I ever will. And uh, hopefully we can see the full potential. Um, it's always nice to see if you get your, your work in the hands of like a real professional, how good they can do it. So <clears throat> yes, fat red foo, like the inside of an abalone shell, uh, just not full rainbow you know not like you know blue rainbow <laughs> all right let's go look at my purple paints and thankfully my shop is not super dirty today okay this is what i'm talking about with the paints Let me move these out of the way. 
Ba -dum, ba -dum. Don't fall over. Okay. This is the total boat resin that I have. And then uh, this is some of the metallic powder. This stuff is really cool. <clears throat> I've got some red metallic. I actually have a whole tray of like a billion colors, but anyways. This is my paint and colors. To go in with my brushes. I'm actually starting to run out of some colors too. And my greens fell over. Okay. Purples and reds. Let's see if I can lift this out of here. I also have a metallic purple. Maybe. I don't want to go too metallic. Maybe I do. Maybe I want to go full Metallica. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me dioramas. I desire. Ugh. Not bad. Can you tell I've had caffeine? Right. I'm noticing. That. I'm sure you are. Sorry. Let me flip these all up so I can see what's what. I'll probably throw some gray into one of these colors too. Okay. Maybe I'll even throw a little orange highlight somewhere. Crazy like that. Which orange is this? This is big orange. I didn't even know I had that color. Maybe we'll use some big orange. Okay, this is pavement. Yes. All right, let me just grab all the purples really quick. Purples. I'm just gonna have purples and blues everywhere here. And I did say I wanted some red, but how red? Oh, oh, you know what? I forgot to have this big old thing of purple and this thing of weird lavender. <clears throat> Little orange is better than big orange. Is that what you're saying? Maybe. Spiced Berry. I love this color. I feel like the name of this color and the look of this color would go great on the cup of a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> uh, real Red. I love this color for brick as a base color for brick, by the way. Real Red and Red in this Apple Berry or Apple Barrel Walmart brand actually makes a great brick base color. Oops, another Real Red. This the hot rod red. That's probably too bright. All right, I'm gonna go with real red spiced berry. I right, tell you what, I'm gonna do like highlights, and I'll do the tip of the highlight with like orange or maybe an orange wash, and just a couple of spots. I think that would that would be cool. We're gonna get really wacky because it's a space diorama. I want to mix in metallics. A really really light wash of whoops a really really light wash of pinks on the rocks uh it would probably just make it look a little bit more pink um i don't know probably would be pretty subtle um so hold on a sec sorry about that <sighs> slow down jordan okay uh so See if I can show you what the blue what the blue did, the light blue wash. So see if you can see here, you see this sort of like really thin stroke lines right here. There we are. That is from this wash. That's from this wash. So if I did that with pink, I, I would assume I would get that, but it would probably just because of all the blue layers I did, it would probably just start to muddle the top layer. If I didn't do the top wash in blue and I did it in pink, we'd have probably a different effect. Um, but at this point, I probably won't add that, but you should try that um, and see what it looks like. I think uh, if it was a very, very thin pink, it could add to it, like almost like a transparent pink would look cool. Actually, if I did it, if I actually, you know, it would look good with pink. If you got, if you mixed yourself up a transparent airbrush paint with pink, like a pink and a clear, and then did some subtle highlights across the flat surfaces um, with pink and um, 
like a clear in an airbrush, that would make it really look iridescent. When you start adding clear layers, clear color layers over this, that's when you get really, I don't know, fancy. I can't think of a good uh, synonym for the, my, this is, this is the best I can do. That, whatever that is. <laughs> um, I need, I have a thesaurus right there to help my brain and uh, I never pick it up because, you know, whatever. All right, let me look at these purples. I'm gonna start with, so this is, if you watch my miniature, how to paint miniature concrete video, which is one of my most popular videos on my channel. Thank you guys if you've watched that. If you haven't, go check it out because the techniques I go over in the how to paint miniature concrete uh, concrete apply to anything, to be frank. The concept of layering colors and washes and dry brushing, if you're using acrylic paint on anything, the concepts apply if you want to add a certain color or vibe. So you can change the colors and change what you're, the mood or the feeling you're trying to set uh, using the same techniques and get an interesting result. So if you kind of practice that concrete painting technique, you can apply it to anything. That's kind of what I did on these. I used my own concrete painting technique, which is, it's not really my own, it's just kind of a common technique to be frank, but I, I applied it to this and I changed the color scheme and the color sh uh, theme um, to a blue setting and I inverted what I did in what order to create an iridescent effect instead of just a blue stone effect, right? So I'm gonna do a similar thing on the base here where I did it black because I, I wanted the deepest, darkest crevices to look dark to almost paint lighting into the piece. I like to do that, uh, especially if it's a smaller piece because I don't know what lighting it's gonna end up in in someone's house. So if I can make it have really, really deep values and really, really light values across a color theme, I feel like it looks lit without being lit, if that makes sense to you. There's probably an industry term for that, I don't know, but that's just how I describe it. So I went with a black base coat. I could have gone gray, I could have gone dark brown, I could have done purple, but I went with black because I want, as I dry brush over this and add colors and washes, I want the deepest, darkest areas that are the farthest back to look really dark against the lighter colors I add so the lighter colors look lighter than they really are and it creates a higher contrast. Almost like I took a picture of something plain, put it in Photoshop and turned up the contrast. I like to paint a lot of things like that because I think it makes it look, it just has a stronger visual pop. For me, it's kind of my style. A lot, you know, a lot of people go hyper-realistic and they go for subtlety. I have a hard time doing that, I can do that, but for some reason when I look at it, when I've done it, it looks too flat to me, even though it probably looks correct to most people. My brain just doesn't like it. I like the higher vividness to it. Um, you know, I, I like there to be something coming, feeling like it's almost coming at you or you're in it already. And I think the color and having really darks and really dark darks and really light lights across one color theme is nice. And so I'll dry brush with concrete. I'll sometimes I'll use, I'll use at least three grays but sometimes I'll use five and sometimes I'll mix in a custom color and then I'll add purple and green and blue washes to account for atmosphere and white washes to add for account for atmospherics, mold, uh, fungus, algae, uh, human, in human interaction with the environment. Like somebody dumped a bottle of Gatorade and it washed down the thing, you know, just all kinds of weird ideas, subtle tones you see in concrete from different types of rock. Anyways, those colors all get incorporated for a reason, and I'm going to do the same thing on this, but with completely out-of-this-world colors, so that's why I'm going purple, red, and orange, and blue. So I'm going to do the same ideas and the same technique, but with a completely different color theme. So that's, I know I just went on a rant about that, but that's, if you want to see me explain that with concrete, go watch How to Paint Miniature Concrete. The thumbnail is my hand holding a miniature sidewalk I painted, and I go over the whole painting technique and uh, I'm actually re-editing a miniature sidewalk sculpting video out of foam for you guys because I realized the last ones I did were kind of haphazard, so I'm redoing that. So I'll have a sculpting video if you need that, uh, if you've never done that before. I'll have that coming out in a few weeks. Uh, so you can watch the painting technique, and if you don't already know how to carve the sidewalk in foam, you'll have that too uh, in a few weeks. So that's all coming. What's up, C.H. Anthony? Thanks for being here. And in the way. Uh, yeah, okay, so we have the purples. Purples. So this is where I 
break everything. But let me just show you, just to show you what I'm getting at too, look at these colors next to each other without painting them first, and you'll see what I mean. I'm not gonna use every one of these colors, I'll probably use three or four of them. Um, let me plug you guys in before my battery dies, and okay. Do, 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 purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors. Actually, it is my purple and orange are kind of my favorite colors, anyways. Ask me that on a different day and it'll probably change, but that's what they are today. So So I could even probably throw blue in here if I was just doing ground and get a really nice um get a really nice color scheme, but I'm already doing that with the rock. So I don't need a blue in there. And you see immediately when I put this blue in the camera, what stands out the most? The thing that looks the most blue and the thing that complements blue, right? So I wanna incorporate these two colors to help draw it into the to this, but I also want to draw the eye away from it too. So I wanna go with these other colors to create positive and negative space. So here's sort of the positive space. Here's gonna be the negative space. Here's the highlights to maybe move your eye around the diorama. It's also good to take your other things if you've already painted them like I did and put them here. And then you see these tones. I can see when I put this in frame, these three tones to me are the closest to this. I get this tone down here and these two tones up here. So what I, when I look at this, I'm thinking I wanna use these for sure as like mid-tones or at least one or two of those. And then I'm gonna take this out of frame and I'm gonna put this back. And I definitely wanna use this tone somewhere. This is a pop, but I'll probably use this as a pop on top of these. So I'm actually gonna use all three of these, but I'm gonna be very subtle with these. And then I need sort of a base purple to dry brush. If I go too dark, it's gonna be, I feel like this is gonna be too dark. So I might go, maybe not. Maybe this is the right tone. I feel like these are almost too grapey looking, if that makes sense, like grapes. And my brain is saying these are not correct for this diorama, so I'm gonna take them out. And this doesn't feel right to me either. So maybe I'll mix these two. This feels too dark, this feels too light. Maybe I'll mix these two or I'll grab this and add some white or this and add some black or just mix them. And then I will dry brush maybe one of these and then do washes and then do highlights. And that will be our ground. And then I will come back in some areas where it's really bright and do some weird little pops, uh, if it makes sense. After I paint this, I might change my mind. But you see, I hope this is making sense to you. This is how my brain works. Um, and a lot of this I just kind of picked up from, from just doing this a lot and realizing what sucked to me. said something makes me think of the color palette for the talons and earth final conflict that sounds familiar i don't know why i can't think of what that is yep great i'm glad you're somebody's pick somebody's understanding what i'm doing <laughs> uh sometimes i know sometimes uh, the words don't matter you need to see it so that's why i'm saying just hang out with me so Star Marvel 76. Thanks for being here, brother. Yeah, what time is it where you're at? Like nine o'clock or something? You're over on the East Coast, I think. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry about where the rocks are going yet. Uh, I may, so what I might do is do all the basic painting, glue my rocks down, and then come back and paint in a shadow layer in the purple colors or shadow washes to not highlight, but sort of low light the darker areas to, again, add more lighting and shadow under the rock with just paint. So, let me see. So these are going to get, I love, this is one of my favorite colors. They call it mosaic blue, but to me it definitely feels more purple than blue. It definitely feels blue too. This might be a good mid-tone actually for me. A good because I, I when I look at the middle color like we got the darks the highlights the, which is the darks is like base coat initial dry brushing the main color the middle color right it's kind of the main color and then the highlights and washes I feel like this is the right main color yeah like an indigo you're right fat red uh, an indigo so there's your 
It's your bottom color, your bottom dry brush, your middle color, and then I don't know if I'm gonna use the metallic. I feel like this might be overload. Uh, I will decide later. And then maybe maybe this is a dry brush and this is a wash, or maybe both is dry brush and washes. We'll see. So I think these are my colors. I think that's enough. So I'll make maybe make one color out of this. See how I feel about it. Do this, and then we'll figure that out. So let's do that. I'm gonna make a mess on my table because I don't feel like putting down a billion pieces of newspaper to do that. It's also gonna look weird on camera. Um, so I don't want my my. Uh... I recently learned that the YouTube algorithm, um, it when it processes a video after uploading it or after a live stream, it looks through every single frame. And if things are too busy, it can't it can't sort out metadata and help suggest your video. So I realized I need to try to clean up my workstation a little bit because it's probably not helping me uh, get out to new people. So <laughs> like and subscribe and share, please. Um, but I realized uh, it if I have too much in the frame, it actually can confuse YouTube's AI. And so it also confuses me. So I'm just going to make a mess down here and I'll clean it up later because denatured alcohol can clean up that mess. You didn't need to know that, but that's what that's where my brain's at right now. <laughs> okay, so set all these colors in the back, out of the way, and I'm gonna need quite a bit of this, and probably gonna need to wash my chip brush. So let me see what I want to do. I think I have a clear container over here. Yes, I do. And I might add a little bit of water to this. Maybe not. Probably make it too runny. All right. Let's see what color we can create. Steph D-U-T, what's going on? Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming by. All right. Here is our good, solid... Yeah. <laughs> that looks disgustingly awesome. Go, go, go. <laughs> okay, that's probably way too much, but I got excited there. I like the way it was pooping out purple. Man, that is very, that's a grimacy purple. You know what? <clears throat> that's going to be too much. Let me put some of this aside. I kind of went, got really excited there watching it come out. <laughs> that sounded weird. Okay. Where is that thing I needed? Here it is. This is dry glue in here, so I'm just gonna do this. Too much, too much to start. All right. Got excited by all the gloppiness. There we go, okay. Set this aside and put a lid on it. If I need more, I can make more. All right. Now, this one. Okay, I like this color. I guess this just turned into an ASMR video. I have no idea what color this is too because the label's worn off. Oh, yeah, I guess so. All right. Yeah, caffeine and off days can put me into a weird mood. Sorry, everybody. Yep, that looks good. Yep, 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 yep. This is looking like a Prince Purple right here, man. Purple rain right here, my goodness. <clears throat> custom color. Usually I overmix custom color when I make it. Because I hate when I mix up a custom color I love and then I run out in the middle of painting a diorama. Um, because then it doesn't look the way you want it to look. and uh, Or when you try to re make a new batch of it, it doesn't look the way you want it to look. So I would rather overmix and have too much and have to throw it away than not. And to be frank, these are cheap paints, you know. So it's like, this is like $2. Not even $2. This is like a dollar worth of paint. So if I have to throw it away, it's okay. I'm not throwing away expensive, you know. $12 in oil paint or something like that, you know, that's got like, 
you know, gold flakes from the bottom of the the wreck of the Atlantis or something. <laughs> it's like, it's just, uh, it's just off the shelf acrylic paint, you know, it's okay. All right. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Paint fast, dry hard. Troy knows what's up. Okie dokie. Now, whoops, look at that. Purple. Need another paper towel. Already got like way too much paint on this brush. So this is gonna look weird at first because how rich how rich and dark this color is, but it's really it's all about the layering. This is where you have to trust your own vision too and trust the process, especially if it's your first time doing this. Like even when, even now I'm looking at this and going like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at this going, man, this is probably the wrong color. But I know as soon as I add like the second and third colors, I'll be like, okay, it was fine. But I always stress out thinking it's going to be the wrong color. So I'm just wiping off so that it's dry. Not really. And I'm just going to go lightly over it and hope that I don't put too much down the first time. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm excited now. That's all you have to do to get me excited. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Unlimited purple. Is that what Darth Sidious yelled out? Unlimited purple. Yes. The washes are going to fill in all these cracks too over the black. So it's pretty high contrast now. I'm gonna take some of that down a notch, but I want that dark in there to give a richness to it and the lighting, so. And as you get paint off your brush, um, you can, you'll find you can push down harder if you're dry brushing. So like that's me. At first I went a little bit slow just to make sure I didn't have too much paint coming off of it. And now that I'm confident in how much paint is on the brush, and then the color looks the way I want, or at least conceptually the way that I want, I'm more confident. Yeah, you see that texture? You see that texture? Toilet paper. See the toilet paper right there. It's just toilet paper. And sand. And amazing special ingredient that no one else knows about called time. <laughs> Planet purple. And I'm not trying to be directional or deliberate. I'm just trying to do coverage right now. Just just get get everything to the level of coverage that I want. I'm being made fun of in the chat about something, and that is what it's all about. I don't know what I did. <laughs> so I'll find out later. Somebody will tell me. All right. Um so I'm just worried about coverage and something you do want to avoid. It's it's actually harder to do in a texture like this, but something if you're dry brushing you do want to avoid is creating streaks. Like if I go like this and just, just go back and forth in the same direction on a texture like this, I actually, I can already see it. It's probably, you can't really see it in the camera. I'm looking through the camera, but right here I can see streaks that I just created. And when it dries, especially on the first layer, it's going to be very obvious. So when I do this first layer on a texture that I don't want to have, that doesn't have any horizontal or vertical lines in it or angles or cur specific curves, I want to be, at least for me, I want to be more random like that and get it filled in so that these sort of, the the uh, the curves and the, the hatching that I kind of do back and forth cancel each other out. So if I do have a strong streak, it will kind of go away as I move around randomly throughout the piece, right? You can even do circles if you want, you know? But if I just do like one strong streak and then I, if it, especially if it's got a lot of paint on it, like this got a little bit, quite a bit of paint right here, that's okay. Uh, but if I just go, if I did it too strong, you'd get a weird paint line and it would stand out. You'd have to 
forget about this area and paint it black and wait for it to dry and it just it'll frustrate you i see a lot of people when they do their first brick or cinder block or when they're new to it in the habit of letting letting that happen and um you know you can if you're doing cinder block or brick and because it's got a lot of it's more horizontal than vertical in my mind the vertical lines are broken up and they go back and forth right they're staggered but horizontal lines they're more continuous on something that's brick or tile um, if it's if it's a, a rectangle right and so when i do dry brushing on brick or cinder block i tend to focus more on left to right being even which i'm not doing on this and then I go vertically. I try not to do swirls or swoops when I dry brush something with strong vertical or strong horizontal lines. I try to go vertical and then horizontal and be very, very, very consistent with how much paint I let go onto the piece. And that also seems to accentuate the geometry of it, which makes it feel more like it was built to me. I feel like I can see a difference in the paint, but something on, on this, I'm, I'm using the same idea, but I'm not being vertical and horizontal and, and like really studious about um, my lines. Uh, I'm trying to be random um, and, but even with how much paint goes down, but random with the brush strokes, if this is making sense to you. I hope it's making sense. Yeah, see so like right there, I've got a pretty big streak. I got a little bit of more paint on that than I thought I had, and I'm just gonna come back around it and just kind of blend it out. I'll probably do another pass over some of these areas too. I feel like some of these probably do need some more paint. When you, you do your first coat too, it's gonna start to, yes, see Anthony, I'm avoiding repeating patterns. You're correct, exactly. So um, like I got two pretty strong streaks here, but you do want some level of randomness. This is about how random and strong I want that randomness to be. I don't want a like a bigger, longer streak yet, at least with this color. And like over here, it's starting to dry up here and you can see like how rich this is over here and it's starting to actually become a little bit more muted over here. So I will probably come back and add some more paint, but this first pass is just to see how strong it will turn out. And then I can determine if I want more of the same color, which I think I will want a little bit more. If this is, you know, one amount, I'll maybe come back and do like 25% of that same amount, excuse me, over the same areas. And I think I'll get the color strength that I want. I'm very happy with the way this is looking right now. I'm glad you're all here for it. So again, shameless self plug. If you go watch my Space Bamboo video, which has ridiculous music that I wrote myself in it, that I probably too loud, but <laughs> you can uh, watch that video where I explain how to do the toilet paper technique. And you can go watch my How to Paint Miniature Concrete video to get a, a more sort of linear showing of how I do this paint technique in a smaller period of time. If you need a, a refresher without watching this whole stream again later, uh, you can go check that out. Oops. I love chip brushes. Chip, 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 chip brushes. They're my favorite, especially, well, for, for weathering uh, and dry brushing on large pieces. I love them. You can dry brush with a lot of things, but I just, I really like chip brushes because they're naturally random. Like this is not where, that's the way the brush bristles, brush bristles were <laughs> when I bought it. Um, and I like that it creates a natural randomness. And so I love chip brushes. I do not like using perfect uh, trimmed brushes on like stone, unless it's a fine textured stone. Um, or I'm trying to be extremely subtle, which I'm usually not. I'm usually doing very bold things, uh, which is just kind of what I like to do most of the time. I can do subtle, but I always feel like, I feel like I never did enough <laughs> when I do something that's subtle. This is probably just my personality, but I know there's a lot of beautiful diorama artists out there who do wonderful, like, facades of buildings in New York City and fronts of houses that are just nice red brick, got some white trim, look hyper real, love it. And I always look at it and go, man, I got to do one of those like soon. I haven't done one in a while, but then I go, it's not crazy enough for me. <laughs> and then I go, ah, never mind. 
I gotta do a purple alien space world with glowy blue lights and neon green tubes. That's more my stride. Like even when I did the Cambodian jungle diorama with the uh, mech, like I was just like, now we need to do a tree and we need to do vines and we need to do water and we need to do like 14 different textures because I couldn't just keep it simple. I couldn't do it. It's not in my blood. This, I'm not too worried about this area because it's going to be covered by rocks. Not that there's a problem or anything, but... Oh man, this looks so cool the way it is. It looks like it's almost like a... It almost looks like it's under a black light, but it's in full light. My full studio lighting here. Look at this. <clears throat> See, it looks, it's kind of, eh, the camera's like, it's kind of, some of the details losing itself in this camera, but it, to me, it looks like it's under a black light. <clears throat> I like this color that we mixed up. Okay. See, there's some streaks there. That's because the texture is flatter here. So, another pointer. If your texture is very subtle, you may have to pay more attention to not doing the streak thing. So here I am going across it in a few different directions, deleting the streaks. There was like three streaks there just out, and now they're gone. Boom. Streak-free windows. Super high contrast, purple planet of purpleness. You know what, Duffman? Stop giving me ideas. <laughs> I, so if you guys haven't seen my miniature bat cave video, I did use UV paint in that for an effect uh, that I had always wanted to try and it worked out great. I might do UV paint in this. I actually thought about putting black lights in this diorama. I just think because of the way I set this up, it probably wouldn't be great, but I could put in some Easter eggs with UV paint. I have UV paint. I might do that at the end because it's invisible. So maybe at the end, I'll add some UV highlights. So I, uh, my Batcave diorama has two lighting setups inside of it, or two main lighting setups. Um, it's got regular standard bright white lighting uh, with this, it's made out of LED strips. And it's also got black light LED strips. So there's two um, circuits and you can turn off the white light and turn on the black light circuit. And it reveals graffiti. I, uh, I put some graffiti in there. And so I'll let you go check that out and see what it is. Or you can scroll back like three years on my Instagram and see it. But uh, I decided to put a cool Easter egg in the diorama in blacklight. Um, and I was very happy I did. I actually like the way the diorama looks better under blacklight um, than, uh, than the regular lighting just because of the way I designed the cave. So I think that's one of my most underrated builds because I just didn't, I lost all my, I think I lost all my photos because I dropped my, the phone I was using at the time. I was just using my phone. All the video and all the photos that I hadn't already saved to my cloud, which was most of them, were on the phone, and I dropped the phone in the toilet when I was going to the bathroom at Home Depot. And my phone shut down within like two minutes after pulling it out of the toilet, and I lost all the photos and video of that. Um, and I had, I just, I haven't been able to share them because I don't really have them. And if I share what I already have, I'm just sharing a lot of the same stuff. So, but. Go check out that three-part series if you haven't. Uh, that was early Oilers where I was figuring out how, to, how I wanted to edit videos. So there's a lot of still images with me explaining them, but it's very informative. There's actually a gentleman who completely rebuilt my Batcave for himself. Um, he shared that in a couple of Facebook groups. 
and he shared it with me when he finished it and it's like it's like an exact copy and he followed my tutorial and i was like whoa i you know as a maker trying to do videos you're always concerned that you're not getting across what you're doing or what you're saying and when he showed me that i was like okay it worked <laughs> it was i was like thank you universe for reassuring me that i actually said it correctly because he watched my three-part series and literally remade the whole thing like identical to how i did it and i was like wow that took a lot of effort too because he would have had to pause the videos and look at details look at my instagram posts and he did it because there was some i didn't show every single thing i made i showed every process i did but he recreated the whole thing a little bit smaller than mine but it's the exact same layout exact same colors exact same like basic cave shape everything and i was completely blown away that he was able to do that um so anyways it's worth a watch because apparently there's a lot of people, so fat red foo i'm glad you think so I'm trying my best. And to be honest, I I I I think uh all those years growing up watching Mr. Rogers and Bob Ross <laughs> really did influence me because I've gone back and watched some of my live streams to clip skills out of them. And I'm like, you know what, I probably said that because that's something Bob Ross said, and I didn't even really realize I was doing it. So I gotta give credit to those wonderful human beings who influenced me when I was bored at home watching PBS and uh, falling asleep, listening to Bob Ross's amazing voice and telling you it's your little world. You can make whatever you want. There are no mistakes, just happy accidents. And I think that it's, it's funny, you don't really think about the meaning of words like that when he says that, but I think it really did influence me subconsciously and gave me the attitude of like, just roll with it. And I've learned a lot just rolling with it over the years. I figured out a lot. I've rediscovered a lot. Um, and it really, really, really did influence me. Those guys, like everything they did. So if they went that, I know that's what they were going for. And it definitely worked on me. And I know it worked on a lot of you too. So thank, thank PBS. <laughs> thank the public broadcasting service. They're the real heroes. Kidding. They're monsters. No, just kidding. Okay, just kind of going back over some of these spots here that feel like they need some love. Purple diorama. Do -do 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 -do. C.H. Anthony, I'm 100% with there, with there, with you. <laughs> I, uh, okay, so I jokingly say, but it's actually kind of true, um, personal story time here. My parents, they, they got divorced when I was eight, um, you know, and they, they did what they needed to do, but there was a period of several years, and they know this, I've talked to them about this, where I was sort of emotionally on my own while they were trying to sort out what they were dealing with. And I'm, you know, I, unfortunately I developed a lot of bad habits from that, that I had to overcome and I, I, and I had to learn to work through, but I developed a lot of, there were a lot of good things that were around at that time that did give me good examples to follow while I sorted out my own feelings as a child. Bob Ross, LeVar Burton, Mr. Rogers, they really, they really were what they were trying to be. They really, really, really were. And I, even now, I, I think I'm like, man, I cannot believe how good of an effect those shows did have on me while I was a youth going through a very hard time and seeing good examples, especially, particularly me, because I'm a man, seeing good examples of good men being good, doing good things that were wholesome. I cannot believe how much that stuff influenced me in a good way. And I mean, if I could meet these individuals in real life and thank them, and if there was a way to do that, I would. Um, but I feel like just carrying on that legacy in whatever small ways I can in my own life is the way to do that, the way to pay that back. So that's why that's part of the reason why, uh, for other reasons too, you know, my, 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 <laughs> the, what, what I believe in in my core beliefs as well. But, 
it's one of the reasons why I try to keep a neutral theme on this channel and I try to make everything accessible to everyone. I don't I don't I don't ever want to do anything that makes anybody feel like they can't enjoy being here or they're not included or they would feel odd. Uh, I just want to have a good time making fun neutral things with everybody. And I think that's 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 where a very large part of that came from uh as a youth and you know more of my life has influenced that but I know a lot of you feel the same. Um, so I think that's why I think that's why we all enjoy each other's channels and content and doing this. And I think that's why there's so many people doing it that are in the age brackets we are and new people discovering it and old people going back to it uh, because there's a, a wholesome nostalgia that makes us feel at home, that makes us feel content, that makes us feel safe. And I love it. I want to live in that space as long as I can. So I'm glad you guys are here with me and please feel free to keep me in check. If I ever do anything that uh, offends anybody, I, I never mean to. I'm just trying to have a good time and, and make art. There's a big sign. I think I've talked about it before. There's the Reno, the generator in Reno where these artists build these enormous art projects and they have a big sign painted on the back of the wall that says, shut up and make art. And, uh, I always wanted to steal that. <laughs> Put it on my wall. It's like, stop thinking about that. Stop having anxiety. Let this be your, your calming thing. Shut up and make art. Don't worry about the rest. If you need a break, an art break, just take an art break. You know? Ramen, brother. Ramen. Okay, I think I'm happy with the amount of purple that's on here. I feel like any more might be too much. Okay. Yeah, oh, uh, Fat Red Fruit, you're right. I was going to say, too, to the whole people who raised me, I mentioned all the PBS people, but I also have to say The Simpsons. <laughs> not that I'm saying, you know, I know there's you know, people out there who might not enjoy that or do enjoy that or, or were raised thinking that their parents told them that it's bad. But honestly, uh, they were they were uh, an example of a family that was meant by Matt Greening to feel relatable, right? And so for all their imperfections and proclivities, that was something that I watched. And I never watched and thought, this is a bad influence when there was arguments or whatever, I thought, oh, this makes me feel kind of normal. <laughs> so I think that's actually one of the reasons The Simpsons was so, it has been so successful is that it actually makes a normal family go, oh yeah, okay, I get all these jokes because we deal with some of that or our version of that or, you know, our less cartoon version of that. You know, I, I, I love that. <laughs> so a lot of Simpsons um, as well as you know the good the 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 more neutral stuff like you know bob stuff that didn't take a side but you know the pbs stuff you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> where is my lid okay it's over here all right oh ch anthony i think a lot of us have had this experience the more i talk to people the more i realize we're not as different as we think we are <laughs> we're really not um we're really not I talk to a lot of folks and realize a lot of, especially a lot of the channels I gravitate to, if I've never met the person, but the more I hear them talk or the more I talk to them or if they open up in the chat or whatever, I'm like, wow, we're not as far away from each other as we might think we are. So, <laughs> Drunk Gizmo Customs, loving the bass. Thank you for being here. I'm glad you like the bass. Rebel troops have entered the bass. All right. Oh my gosh, that looks awesome. <laughs> Wow, that looks so cool. <clears throat> okay. Let me just put some of these rocks in here and make sure I don't want to change anything before continuing with the purples. Uh, where is the other piece that goes right there? It's this piece? Yeah. This piece is part of that little setup right there. Boom. Well, in the words of Avatar, the le uh, what is it, Avatar 2? I see you. <laughs> we see each other. Okay. Oh my gosh, I like the way that looks. Right, we're gonna be changing the purple tones. This is just the bottom, but... Oh boy! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. That looks better than I thought it was gonna look. To be honest. 
<laughs> Wasn't sure how that was going to turn out. Just had an idea in my head. Just don't want him to fall and crack the diorama right now. It's not done. Oh, come on. This guy's pretty heavy. So pretty top heavy. There we go. Dude. Just out of curiosity. Put this over here. This goes right there. This one right here. This one goes up there. Oh, baby. Okay, yeah, I'm starting to see the vision coming together here. When we get that back wall on, that's going to be the kicker. Um, I have to build a, I'm going to build a, a wall over here and a wall over here that magnets together so I can take the wall off if I need to ship it or take it somewhere. These are going to be removable as well. So I have to build the, the sort of engineering for that, which is not that complex, but I uh, I just have to get that done. I'll probably do that off stream because it's kind of boring, or we could do it on stream if you guys want. It's just cutting a couple of angles and throwing some magnets in, which I've actually never demonstrated magnets on this channel. I know a lot of other channels have shown how to do that, um, but I, I do want to do my version of that, which is not that different from other people, but maybe maybe we'll do that this stream or the next one, or I'll pre-cut the pieces and we can do it, something like that. That looks cool. I'm curious what one of the gray dudes looks like in there. Yes. Charles Shadid, you always give your dioramas more of an organic and realistic look. Well, thank you. I will. I'm glad that you feel that way. And I do like. I like organic, and I like. I can do like. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna do a lot more edgy stuff, kind of like this. You know, edges and angles. But <clears throat> I keep having ideas that flow like this. So I'm glad you like the way they look. Let's see what Oleg. Let's put a blue guy in the purple blue diorama. Oh yeah. He looks like he belongs on this planet. Okay. I am happy with the way that is looking. Yes. I don't have to repaint it. And I just have to not ruin it. <clears throat> and I put the white on here because I knew it would contrast whatever we did on the ground. I wanted the edges to pop again with the whole high contrast highs, dark contrast lows, mid-tones being the main colors. That's why I did the white edging. So that was kind of my subconscious thinking at the time. Bat Red Foo, I always go try to go with a lived in world uh, if it makes sense because of Yeah, you know, it makes it feel more real. Even if it's even if it's a wild sci-fi, it makes it feel more real. Paint's already dry. Flat paint dries fast. Never forget. Okay. Now we're going to go with another color. Just do that. Purple, 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 purple. I love it. Just wash my brush off. And uh, these were the other colors. So we just used these and made a custom color. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna set these aside just in case I need them uh, to correct a color or add. Cause sometimes I'll, I'll go over with another tone and I'll put too much and I need to go back and fix it. So it's always good to not put stuff away. Like these were those, this is the mixes that I made. I'm gonna keep these aside. If I don't need them by the time I'm done with the diorama, I'll probably just throw them away. Um, now we're gonna do another tone. This is gonna be our sort of mid tone. And I actually, I don't know, I'm kind of feeling like this might look good as a wash and then do these as highlights. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let me get some water. I think I want to do this as a wash um, to fill in some of the dark, dark. Um, so I feel like if I do this as a dry brush, it's just going to cover over a lot of the purple we just did and completely change that tone, which I like that tone. I don't want to get rid of that tone, but I do want to add in between. So I think, or maybe a really wet paint. Blue wash with pink highlights, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll do this as a wash and then we'll come back and I'll do two sets of highlights um, and I'll just be subtle. I think that might look good. And if I do, maybe really, really wet paint. Why the blue wash? I want to preserve the, I don't, I'm going to change the purple a little bit. 
I just like the effect here, so we'll do a wash. <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see. Everybody's got an opinion. I know, I know. Hang on there. Hang on. I'm just going to get some water. I'll be right back. Okay, I just got some tap water. You can use distilled if you're scared of tap water. I just use tap water, it works fine. Okay, so I'm gonna make a really, really thin paint. That's It's more like, not a wash, but some paint. So I always do the water first and then the paint so the paint doesn't stick to the sides and change. Oh God, I love that color. Okay. <sighs> I like this color a lot. Let me wash off this brush really quick. Purple is my favorite color. Okay. Let's get this cleaned up. I just washed this off in my dirty paint water because I like to add my paint. My whatever paint I'm mixing into my dirty paint water, it adds character to the dirty paint water. We go let's just mix that up into a really really thin paint so it's a wash but it's a thick wash i guess i'm gonna add some more paint and i'm gonna keep some paper towels handy mosaic blue people i love this color um i forgot where i used it last i did use it on something i can't remember what i did it use it on but um uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I'm going to put some paper towels on the side in case I need to soak it up because it, it can be too much. So I'm just going to, and what I might do too, I sometimes I'll do like wet painting with um, a wash and then the salt, the paint I used, meaning I will put some of the paint onto a palette like so. And if I feel the wash is too thin or not getting enough color, I will quickly dip the tip of my brush into the solid paint just to get an, a little bit more paint onto the wash brush with the paint and water to thicken the paint briefly. Uh, it's just kind of a, it's an organic technique. It's just a thing I kind of, there's probably a name for it, but it's just kind of something I developed in doing it's sort of a quick adjust basically. So if I do the whole thing, I don't like it. I don't have to redo the whole thing. I do it as I go. Uh, to get the tone I want as I go. So I'll just sit, leave this on the side if I feel like I need to add to it. If I need to take away, I'm going to keep a clump of paper towels and I will dab to soak up um, to get the tone to calm down. So I do all of these things as sort of like active painting, I call it, where I'm, I'm changing the paint as I do it uh, if I don't like it. So I'll take like two paper towels and make myself a pretty dense rectangle here. And then I can just pick it up. If I don't like it, I can put it back down. So <clears throat> this is a very snozberry like color. You are correct. Uh, fat red foo. No, that was more teal. Yeah, I don't remember where I used this last. It might not have been on the live stream. It might have been on a custom or a commission I did in the past. I can't remember. <clears throat> or later or sooner than later <laughs> okay i don't what i don't want is a bunch of paint flecks in the brush when i start so there is some of that so i'm actually going to take some of this off on my my uh washing rag here you can see there's chunks of paint in there because i'm using cheap paint you get these clumps and stuff which again i don't mind i'm used to but see those little flecks of paint in there i don't want those on the diorama so I'm going to pick those up off the bottom of the cup. Yep, they're there. And get them out so they don't end up on the diorama and ruin the effect. Because they can do that. I forget about it all the time too. I like go put go to put paint down. I'm like, ah, I forgot about the little stringy flecks. And then my diorama is like, it's not ruined, but I have to go back through and 
pull the paint strands like that little ball would have ended up on the diorama. I don't want that. So that's one of the drawbacks of using cheap paints. Well, expensive paints do it too, especially if they sit around for a long time, but I'm used to it and it's not a big deal. Plus I save on paint. Okay, time to get messy. Thank you guys for all the likes, by the way. I appreciate that, as always. Okay, here we go. Oh, baby, yep. Yep, yep, this was the right choice, I can already tell. Yep, 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 yep. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. It's gonna do what I want, I can already see it. Another thing too is <clears throat> on these higher areas right up here where I am with the brush, it's good to start on top and let the paint flow down. If you start on the bottom, you could get too much pooling, like I'm getting some pooling down here and your color could end up denser than you want. So if you have a hill like these, start at the top and let the paint flow down. Uh, it'll help you control how much paint ends up on the bottom so you don't have too much, uh, it doesn't end up like super bright at the bottom, which I probably, I'll probably sop up a little bit of that. Uh, here at the end. And I'm gonna go back over it again. I can tell that's gonna, I'm probably gonna end up doing two coats of this because it looks really bright now, but trust me, as it dries, it's gonna, so I'm just taking this and picking up some of it so it doesn't pull too hard in there. I'll probably do two coats of this um, and I might even do a thicker coat. I'm already seeing it thin out up there and it's, doing what I want, but I might want a little bit more of it. <clears throat> we'll see. We'll let it dry. Make a determination then. Yeah, I love the way the paint uh, washes look when they flow in between these gravelly textures. It looks really pretty. I'll get close up when I do one of these ledges over here and let you guys see it. It's a really a pretty thing to watch. It's actually probably something I should film for a short. People would probably like to watch it. If there's any areas that aren't getting it, you can just kind of stipple your way in there. Yep, luminous, that's a good word for it. I think this is gonna look awesome when it's lit. I can already tell this is gonna be cool. Very happy. This is very much what I was going for, uh, like kind of what I had in my head. I hadn't picked the final color yet. I was originally thinking, I think when I said, I was thinking like grays and blues, but the more I went with it and I did the colors of the buildings and the colors of the gas pumps, Colors of the Rock, I thought, I was like, blue doesn't feel right for the, bluish gray doesn't feel right anymore. So don't be afraid to change your mind when you're working on something. I feel, I was like, what's gonna look good? Don't, you know, don't be so rigid, like, I have to stick to my plan, and then you go, I don't like it. Don't do that to yourself. If you feel like you should change it in the middle of it, then change it. It's totally cool. Give yourself the creative freedom to experiment and learn. Some, and sometimes sticking to your rigidity can actually help you learn too, you know, so I'm not telling you not to do that, but don't be afraid to let yourself change your mind. Some, I honestly, I think the stuff that I've done that I'm the most happy with is stuff that I change my mind on, you know. It's like gonna do it in green and I was like, nope, let's do it in brown. Oh, that looks better. Or sometimes it even looks more like I was originally thinking after I changed my mind, you know? Getting there. 
You might be asking, why am I not just pouring it on and moving it around? Well, because if I pour it on, I can't control the flow and I might end up with big pools of color in areas I don't want it. This is almost looking like a black light painting of a space, uh, of a alien planet. This area seems to be getting thin. I'm just going back over it right now. To get dry paint, what are you saying now? What's the best way to get dry paint up from a project if the paint is too thick? Like if you laid it on too thick and it's dried? It depends on what you've painted. There's a lot of different methods. Some are going to work better than others. Some might, in some, some cases, you might just be stuck. But if it's water-based acrylic paint like this, you can just usually get a wet, you can get a wet microfiber cloth or even a wet paper towel or even a wet piece of a t-shirt. And if you rub with a damp cloth back and forth on dry acrylic water-based paint, it'll come off. Um, it might smear some of the tone around that you can, and you can't get it fully off, but you can get a lot of it off. I have had to do that on brick walls where I accidentally just laid down way too bright of a color and didn't really see that until it was dry. And I was like, Ugh. so I got a, um, a damp, I have t-shirt material that I save for my old t-shirts and I, I got it damp and then or I soaked it and then I wrung it out. So it was damp, but evenly damp. And I just, you just rub it back and forth and it'll start to pick it up. You're going to have to switch areas of the rag too. You're going to rub it off and like, it's going to turn red if it's like red brick. So you're going to have to roll another piece in and then rub it off. Otherwise you'll start smearing the paint you rubbed off back onto the diorama. So if it's acrylic water-based paint like that, if it's not on foam and it's painted on a hard surface like metal or plastic, you can get a rag and use <clears throat> denatured alcohol and wipe it like that and you can get it off in more precise thinner layers um you could use it on you could use it on um a textured thing as well but the denatured alcohol is going to soak it's going to behave like paint and paint water and it's going to go into places you probably don't want it so if it's a flat hard surface like metal or plastic that's why i would recommend denatured water um alcohol because it'll work more precisely and more more fully but if it's a textured surface that you painted and you want to change and it's water-based acrylic, I think just rubbing with a rag with water on it or that's damp is, is easiest. And that's just something I realized through accident, trying to use rags um, to do other things. You know, another little thing you discover by accident. Okay, let me see if I can get you guys in closer for this cool effect here. So check this out. Pretty cool. Do it again over here, see if I can hold my hand more steady for you. Ta -da. It's fun to look at as it flows through the texture. Let it flow through you. Let me just get myself into a better position here. Well, I haven't had to pick anything up yet. Um, I will blot at the end. I'm probably not going to blot too much because I'm liking the way this is looking. And when it dries, it's going to be less bright. So it's going to, I may wait. I may wait for confirmation as it dries here. So like, I like, it's hard to see on camera, but there's a lot of subtlety in there I like. I might not want to take away. So we'll see. We'll see. Almost done with this layer here. 
We'll see uh, if I need to blot or take it off. Um, it's kind of feeling pretty good the way it is. I see a few areas that could use it. I don't know. We'll see. And if I blot too much off, I can always add more later. But I'm, I'm just trying to do it in kind of the least amount of passes as possible. Since we are demonstrating live, I'm trying to do it with less repeats of the same steps if I can. Like some areas would probably benefit from more or less, but you can't always determine that until you kind of cover the whole piece and look at it as an entire unit. Like even now I'm seeing spots that probably could use some extra. Like some of these little areas here. looking. I want the dark contrast, but I don't want too much black. I want the black to look like it's a black purple and not solid black. <clears throat> but I want that. Well, I want some areas to be solid black, but I don't want as much as I had on that first pass. Oops. Of course, ah, I forgot about that. There it is. Okay. Oh, that looks great. Okay. Very happy with that. Let's put a blue rock back on this one here. See what it looks like with the blue rock. Boom. Oh boy. Just do a little, just see what it looks like if we do a little bit of it. <clears throat> you yeah, actually feel like I need more of it, um, not less of it here. And I want to do it thicker. So basically what I originally described, I think I'm going to be doing here. So let me just, this area didn't feel like it got enough of it here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to highlight my path. And then I'm going to highlight some area, other areas here. I think that's what I want to do. Is highlight this path with the color. So I'm going to take my own advice here. Maybe the steps and the path. Just to create interest in the color itself as well. So I'm going to get my brush wet with the wash and I'm going to dip the bristles in this paint directly right here and then I'm going to go around like this to get it to sit a little bit stronger in the wash it'll have a stronger color in the wash and then I'm going to spread it around with more of the wash and this is where I'll probably do some dabbing and swabbing and wash and buckling you'll notice as you get the wash brush into your paint the paint will get thinner too so you'll have to get more of it out of this but it's sort of an evolving process yep okay yeah this is getting this is looking closer to what I was thinking with some contrast and then I'm just gonna all blend the edges here in a minute so it's not like this line in the middle of the diorama yep okay so now I've got a more defined line here and then I'm going to blend the edges with the wash here and just Go like this. And so that it's not so direct. I just want a, a shift to brighter to darker to draw the eye to this spot in the diorama. 
and then I'll come back and pick up what I feel like I need to pick up. There's going to be stuff here too, so I'm not worried about this area. There's going to be rock and a thing. Add a little bit up here. Yep. You see what I'm going for here? Maybe I'll leave this dark tone down here to create an edge. And when this dries too, again, this is all going to lighten up as it dries. So, like, see, even over here, it's looking like it was before. I even put a wash on it in some of these spots. So it's going to get lighter than that as it dries, more pale. <clears throat> you just kind of have to trust that that's going to happen. Okay. Get some of this and go into the steps. Highlight those steps. And I'm going to not do the vertical faces. Whoops, hard to see there, sorry. I'm not going to do the vertical faces uh, of the steps. But I'm going to like do some stuff like this. Carry over the color like that. Create like a little dark spot here. Darker. Again, it's going to be very subtle as this dries, trust me. It's not going to be as rich as it looks now. Be a little up here on this ridge and down into there and I'm gonna leave these vertical faces darker you see how that already looks like it's lit from the top or the back it's not but the paint is making it look that way so if somebody wanted to add in, add more lighting yeah they could brighten this up or not and even if it doesn't it looks more defined and like sort of presentorial you know it looks like a, a display piece that way when you're adding washes too by the way you don't want to pick up your diorama and tilt it because your wash is going to go somewhere you don't want it so just a little tip there i'm trying to now just rotate this around oh my god i love the way that looks that looks so freaking sweet look at that see we've got this very cool mishmash it looks like almost four colors, but I used one color, right? Black, the dry brushing, and then the one color, and I've got like, it looks like there's six or seven colors going on right here. This is why I do this sort of wet painting and then dipping into the solid paint. You get a lot of variation in the same tone or in the same uh, color or with the same color, whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> just gotta get some more paint out here and just kind of keep this going. Same thing to these steps, just to create a, a point of interest for the eye. Same thing up here, just do some of this up here and then just kind of let it blend it out. Just kind of doing what makes sense to me as I go right now. No specific rule to what I'm doing at the moment, just just kind of feeling it out right now. I feel like you now this spot's gonna have a rock there. Okay, very happy with the way this looks right now. I'm just gonna let this dry. Maybe I'll do a little bit of dabbing. I'm gonna give it a minute to keep drawing and see if it looks too bright in certain areas, but this is looking pretty good. I almost feel like I don't need highlights now with the way this is looking. We'll see as it does. Okay, maybe I'm gonna do a little dabbing over here. Uh, maybe a little bit around where these rocks are gonna go just so the rocks have a little bit more of a shadow under them. Like there's rocks going here, 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 up against the wall over there, over here and over there. So I chose not to try to highlight those areas so they would look more lit. <clears throat> and just take a little bit out of there. Just a little bit. I really like the tones that are in here, so I don't want to mess with it too much. 
Just kind of let them dry and see how muted they get. Pretty happy with that. I'm even seeing like blues and pinks in there that I didn't intend for, but look correct. All from this color. And it's, it's blending to some degree with that first layer of dry brushing we did because that dry brushing isn't really cured. It's dry, but it's not really cured. It's like halfway there. So as we put on this wash layer, it's gonna mix a little bit with that dry brushing layer and create new colors in the dark areas, which is how I paint. I like to, I like to do the next layer on the next layer on the next layer and let that help me create effects in the paint. Because if I just did that dry brushing and let it dry totally overnight, it wouldn't blend as well with this layer, which it would still look nice, but it would probably have a little bit of a different effect. I bet the, I bet this would look more, the color would look more coarse. It would look a little bit sharper. Um, like if you put something in Photoshop and turned up and tried to sharpen the image, it would probably look like that because I let that purple dry brushing dry overnight. And you might want that. And again, that's something to consider that you might want. But in this case, I'm trying to create a blend tone. I just want the dark to have a pop because I want to do the light. The light's going to have a pop. Um, so I want the purple tones to be pretty, have a, a blended look. I don't want them to look too separate. So if that makes sense to any of you. I'm glad you like this fat red foo. I'm glad you like it. And that rhymed. I will not eat purple eggs. Sam I am, I will not eat them here or there or in a diorama or anywhere. I'm just gonna drink some, some caffeinated, what is this, caffeinated yerba mate. Keep my energy up here. Not that I need it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna let this dry. I think this is good the way it is. I'm gonna put a fan on it too, so there's gonna be a little bit of background noise, just to encourage it. See if I can get to the highlights here before we end the stream. We're gonna do other things. I'm not gonna end the stream right now. I just mean, I might, I, before I do, if I start doing highlights before this blue this wash gets drier, it would blend the highlights into the wash and probably not look right, uh, at least for the effect I'm going for. So I want it to get to that half dried stage like I did with the purple. But because there's so much water in this wash, it's going to take a little bit longer. So I'm going to leave this fan on it. Uh, hopefully it, it could get to the point where I can start doing some of that before uh, we get to the end of the stream. So I'm going to play some of these rocks and see if I want to start doing landscaping, space escaping. <clears throat> uh, just going to lay these out and see how they look with what we've done thus far. And you can see actually where I pressed in the rocks to the texture here. You see right here, there's a little bit of an L, uh, 90 degrees. That's right where this went, right there. Boom, you can see the little zigzag right there in the toilet paper. That's from me taking this and just pushing it into place. It's from me just pushing that into place like that. <clears throat> and where's the other piece? It goes right here. Right. And this, it came unglued from this, but that's right, I'll just glue it back in. That goes right there. I could make a replica. Actually, I have another sign that I want to put up in the shop that I just reminded myself about when you said that comment. Um, that I took from downtown Reno, and I think I've told that story before, but uh, I'll put it up in the back of my shop. I want to put it up behind me. I just keep forgetting to get it because it's in storage at my in my my outside storage closet at my house. And I forget about it because it's not in front of my face. Um, I believe these ones went up here. Was it this one here? Or here? I can't remember. I'll find out in a minute. This one, and then I think it was this little guy up here. And this one here. Yeah, I think it was that one there. Yep, that fits. That's, yeah. When I can move the whole dial, I think it's in the right spot. Yep. Okay, that one went there. I have reference images, but they're on my phone, so I can't look them up. I took reference pictures of where these all went, so I could not lose track. But these feel like they're fitting into the right spots. Yep. This one was 
I think I just had it chilling right in there like that. Yep. This one and these two. This one was somewhere up here. I think I had it back in here actually. Yep. And then these guys were way over here. Should have some sewing needle pins. There they are. Thank you guys for the 34 likes. I really appreciate that. Thank you to everybody who is here still. So I had this. Comment below if you know what that is. This guy fit into this little crevasse right there. And then I had these guys. I don't remember which one I put here. Was it this one? Nope. That one, that looks, there we go. That looks like that fits. And I don't remember where this one went at all. <clears throat> this guy. Went right. There we go. Those are at the same angle. And this guy. spot again this is kind of rough over here and there it is right right there right there and this one abutted it or almost abutted it a butt there we go no yes <laughs> it's like Legos Nope, it wasn't like that. That was more like, yeah, there we go. There we go. Trying to find these spots again. They were subtle. And this guy went right in here. Looks just about right. I'm trying to make sure these don't go off the diorama because if I ship this and this sticks out, this will break off. Um, or if I display it and somebody bumps it. So everything is meant to I kind of drag my hands up from the side to make sure nothing's actually overlapping, even though it might give the effect that it is. Somewhere right in here, like that. Yeah, it looks right. Okay. I don't remember where this guy went. Probably up there. pictures later before I glue these down for a final glue. It was over here actually. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, that looks kind of nice like that. For now, Space diorama, it's coming along. Okay, as I let this dry, we can glue uh, together 
um, and put the other light strip on the other side of the wall because I never did that. <laughs> I was going to do it. I just didn't get around to it. So let us move this off to the side. And these to highlight. I'm not going to go with this. And we have these to highlight. We'll figure out the red and orange. I'm going to make that very subtle. Maybe in only one or two spots. So we're going to keep these. Just moving the stuff out of the way here so I don't get confused as to what paints I've already used because I'll probably forget if I don't do this. All right. <clears throat> so we're here. Jay. Here. Boop. Put Kragnar in there really quick without touching the paint. Kragnar. Oops. Man, he's so tall. Okay. Kragnar. It's funny, this diorama looks so huge, but you put one of these guys in there and it's like, it doesn't look that big anymore. <laughs> From pink to white. What did you say? Sorry. Whoops. What did you say? From pink to white to black and now purple. I feel like we've watched the seasons change in this diorama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a journey. It's a journey. It's a journey. Just think about like, we're gonna have this rubble rock spread up like close to these rocks sprinkled in strategic areas then we're going to have that purpley red uh, grass in certain areas as well right stuck down and making like maybe make some little bushes out of it and stuff we're going to have that wall this isn't even like this is like 30 percent completely assembled you know there's going to be a lot more in here so it's going to add more tones but i love the high contrast and the complementary contrast of the blues and the purples in person, it's extremely vivid. I know it is on camera too, but it's even more vivid. Um, so hopefully, again, I can get some really nice photos and share them with all you guys too on my Instagram and on the community tab here when we get to that point. We also have these tops that we got to put on. Those got to get painted, and that's another color that's going to go in there. Oh, you can't see them, can you? these things there's another color in there yeah do 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 ba do ba boo all right let me grab the wall the space headdress okay. get the other pieces I wasn't originally planning on leaving these red, but I might because it complements the colors in the diorama so well. Or I'll paint them, repaint them red. Okay. All our beautiful space pieces. Look at that. It all comes together. <clears throat> the red in there too. Look at that red pop. <clears throat> okay. Test wire. All right, so I gotta add this light over here. Same as I did over here. Make sure it's working. Make sure I cut the same size piece here. Cut it right 
here, I'll we'll get another quick demo of this while this dries before we move on to the other painting. So maybe if I can assemble these lighting, we can glue these pieces on. I just hadn't done it yet. Do 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 do. Boop. A little baby light. Ah, uh, here it is. I'll be nice. color went all weird there for a minute. I don't know why. But it did. Well, let me see if this is going to fit. This is our little DC connector cable here that we would plug into a properly rated 12 volt, one amp or less um, wall wart, which I demonstrated a couple streams ago, or last stream actually. Make sure this is going to work. Get my wall wart. My road group. There's my wall wart. It is rated for 12 volts and 1 amp max so that it's not drawing way too much power for this. Let's see if I did that right. Yes, I did. There is my lights. Woo! All right, we have light. So we know I cut that correctly, so now I can glue it into place. Always check just to make sure. And we can do the thing. <clears throat> Need to cut another little piece of that tube. into place if I can get this stupid thing to peel off make sure this is at the same height here There's my stupor glue. There it is. I can even open it. Eh. Try to do this here. Hey, 39 likes. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. And now is it going to open there? Well, the top's not going to open. That's okay. I think I can still use it. Yep. I do like to super glue these down onto a hard surface just so they don't peel off.
I know I'm being kind of haphazard about this, but this is actually the last bottle of super glue I have left. I gotta go buy some more. So I'm just trying to make it work so it will stay in place for me tonight. Yep, that's fine. All it needs to do is reflect the light. It doesn't need to look pretty, which that will do. Where is my accelerator? I don't know why I always need to say accelerator like accelerator. I just like to. Accelerator. Okay. There's that. The light works. So I need to get another one of these guys and feed them through to the back side before I glue those things on and make sure they're going to double confirm on that. So. This one. Sliding that onto there and clamping that. Oh, let me clamp down, please. Do it. Do it. Do the thing. This is still working. Don't really want to have to disassemble this when it's all glued together. Hey, alrighty then. Perfect. Do 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 do. Strobe lights. Do 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 do. Okay. There's that. Let me get the other one of those. I don't remember where I put them last time. See, this is almost dry over here, so we're getting there. Get back to the painting here in a minute. This one still works. I I check my lights like every single time I do a little fiddly move. I check every time just because I'm I've gotten to the point where I've gotten to the end and I thought I checked and I didn't and I had to rip apart something. So don't let yourself do that. <laughs> don't do that to yourself. Okay, so both of these are working. Let me add the aluminum tape. I will Y connect those together. I'll daisy chain, I'll daisy chain them together on the back side with another connecting wire. I have a bunch of those. They're splitters, I can connect them all so that those two DC plugs that, that are floating on the back side now, I'll connect those with a little splitter and uh, that's how I'll get the circuit. I'm actually probably gonna add some lights up here too and I'll add those and just create uh, like two little connections that lead to one so I can power everything on a parallel circuit, which is just really easy. It's just a matter of plugging everything in together into one line um, and it's just, it's gonna be like four LED strips. So I was thinking of putting lights up here with a green tint and lights down here, these have a whitish blue tint. 
so we uh, draw in the same theme. And then I'm going to put white lights inside of those green tubes over there. I still haven't decided if I want to wire those through the bottom or wire them separately with their own battery pack and switch. I don't know. I'll probably figure that out at the end. Um, but let me use the restroom really quick. You guys can watch some paint dry. I'll be right back. And we're back. Thanks for waiting. Okay. Let's see if I can if I can glue these in place, have them look good. These, oh no, that's for the other side. This one goes here. Okay, so this, I'm gonna have to cut this here. these here and see if I want to cut slots for these or holes for those excuse me or if I can just glue them in place where they are bend out a little. Just final fitting is always a little fiddly. Making sure everything is gonna fit the way you imagine. I'll probably stick something on on this little piece right here at the bottom, like glue a little thing there. But I kind of like the way this looks. I don't like that I can see writing on this. So maybe I'll come back just with some paint and just kind of brush a highlight over this. Because I actually really like the way that red looks now that... I was thinking I wanted to repaint it a totally different color, but I actually kind of like the red. Now that I've done all that blue and purple over there, I think this red will be a pop with the paint and it will feel right. And then if I want to shove some more stuff in there, I can hot glue some tubes up in there like I was originally thinking. If I feel like it needs more when I get to that point. I'll also probably add some very, 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 very thin black washes over this after I erect it up into the space. So, I think I'm pretty happy with that the way it is. So I'm gonna add the foil tape here and then um, go ahead and glue this stuff in place. I'm pretty happy with that. some stuff here really quick this is just aluminum foil ducting tape you can get this at Home Depot uh, it's usually around like the roofing and you can get it in the HVAC section I've seen it in the roofing section 
because people use it to, as tape to seal uh, stuff that leads up and out of the roof. Um, it's just aluminum tin tape. I don't know if it's actually aluminum. It might be just be like tin. So tin tape, tin foil tape, aluminum foil tape. And my knife. Just trim off this excess here. Same thing over here. Boop. And we need some more tape. Deep, deep. Thanks for being here tonight, guys. I know there's it's an off night for me normally, but I wanted to just, like I said, catch up some of the streams here because I got plans for October as far as what I'm going to do on what days, which I will be announcing. Um, I just uh, want to catch up some of this so we're not dragging this diorama out farther than it needs to go. So to the 40 of you still watching, or 41 of you still watching, thank you for the likes and thanks for being here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we This is just to create a refractory environment so that the light will bounce around and come out the bottom more effectively. Um, we're just creating a reflector basically in here, just like uh, just like you would in a headlamp for a vehicle. You get the all the silvery reflectiveness with a bulb facing towards it. It reflects everything back. Fat red foo. Oh, thanks, bud. <laughs> yeah, I uh, when I film my miniature wiring video, I it's funny because it's like when you sometimes when you get into the camera and I've done it live too. Words and things elude you, and then you start talking and you just keep going and you don't realize. Oh, I kind of said that wrong, even though I demonstrated it correctly, and I did a little bit of that in that video. And even when I edited it, I didn't really catch it. And then later when I rewatched the video, like months after I posted, I was like, oh, I didn't say that right. And then later down the road, I had a bunch of people go, hey, you have no idea what you're talking about. I'm like, well, I actually do. I just didn't say it perfectly correct. But it's, you know, it's not going to hurt anybody as long as they do what I showed. Uh, and, well, I didn't say anything wrong. It's not going to cause any problems. <laughs> That's all I'm getting at. I just, uh, yeah, I, uh, at first I was taken aback. But that's actually, it's funny because those comments prove the reason why I made that video. <laughs> It's actually my, it's my most viewed produced video on the channel. That's because people needed it. People needed a video just explaining how to get, how to wire up some LEDs, put a switch in, they needed it. And I knew that. That's why I made the video. And a lot of, there's so many, so many engineering types and stuff. They just don't realize that sometimes people just want to put a light in something and they don't need to know like every single electrical theory out there to understand how to do that. You really don't. Most people don't need that. Uh, for hobbies. They just want to put a switch and a light. And that's all that video was meant to do, and it does it. So, you know. Thanks for the encouragement, though. I appreciate it. And that's how we did the other side. We're done. Okay. Do I want to use hot glue? Probably not. Maybe a little. Let me grab some hot glue. how often how much i care about this thing <laughs> it's broken and covered in dirt and grime who cares it's a hot glue gun it's one of nature's most hideous creatures 
ever created. The elusive, wily, vengeful, evil hot glue gun. I'm just gonna throw this trash over here in my trash can. It can help you go fast, but you know, you can help you go fast and also not last. <laughs> Sounds like a slogan, but it depends on what you're going, right? As I've said, it depends on what you're going. So I can fit the other side really quick. Test fitting over here. Make sure this is cut how I want. Do 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 There's a bead shop here in northern Nevada that's uh, closing. That's been open for 21 years, but it's okay. They're closing on purpose. They're actually retiring. But I went to the bead shop. I found I was looking for a specific thing uh, for a thing I'm working on, which I'm not going to reveal because it's going to be a produced video down the road. But I needed a specific thing, and uh, nobody. I could not find it anywhere. I couldn't even find it online. And I went to the bead shop, found out they were closing. Everything was 50% off. Um, so I spent like 40 bucks and got a billion things that I've been wanting. I bought a bunch of stuff, like all this stuff too, which is not what I was talking about, but I got a bunch of supplies. I got like a billion, ba these bags of gears were 10 cents, I think. So I bought like 50 of them. So that was cool. <laughs> That's not every day where you randomly find a bead shop that's clothing. Bead shops are amazing places, by the way, to find accessories and things for miniatures that you never thought you might need. Um, show up in a bead shop, there's all kinds of tiny things that can be useful. <clears throat> so this is the tip of the day. Go visit your local bead store. Never know when they might be closing. Okay, I'm going to use my good old... Styro glue, my Bob Smith Industries EPS glue to do the main gluing, and I'm gonna use hot glue to hold it in place. We're gonna go like this, and we're gonna go like this, and I already got a little string of glue where I don't want it, that's okay. And then we're gonna go put glue on the top side of this. And we're going to place it like that, like that. Like that. And then we're going to do hot glue under this. Glob it on. I hate hot glue, but it's sort of helpful sometimes. Okay. That can stay right there. Wipe some of this off. Alright. Now we can glue this guy on. This one I'm probably going to do both super glue and my other glue. Run 
some super glue along the inside edge so it falls down when I flip it over. And then run super glue on the straight edge or on the immediate edge so that it bonds immediately. Actually, I'll probably do it. Oh gosh. Of course. Stupid super glue. Why must you do this to me? We've entered the mildly boring but progressive stage of the build. Where I just have to do a bunch of piddly things that are not as grandiose as purple paint. Eh. Eh. There we go. All I had to do was force it. Who knew? Okay. Flip it over and plop it into place. Go where I say, please. Go into the plate. There we go. Okay. Yay! Okay, cool. And then I'll probably put another pipe coming out of there or something. Grab another stick of hot glue. Do for the night. I'm glad, I appreciate the positivity, Fat Red Poo. You are getting tips on how to uncap hot glue that is glue, or super glue that's glued itself shut. Okay, there's that. And on this one, I'm going to decide if I want to, oops, it needs to go over a little bit. Glue is cleanable offable. As long as it's not fully cured, I can get it to wipe off. doing this glue on this off screen, hold on. I don't want to mess it up. Putting glue on this top edge here. Now it's exciting. Gluing up the diorama. You notice how I sing to try to make it entertaining? And it's awful singing. But hopefully it's entertaining. <laughs> oh, I feel like Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park. Now I, uh, here in the car, uh, talk to myself. Uh, that's, that's chaos there. in place so the super glue can kind of cure a little bit before I go nuts with everything else. Okay, dokie, after all. Shoo -da -doo, doo 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 Okay, I think that will stay put. Let's do the other side. 
see that down is drying. See there's still a richness and a, the darks are darkening up. That's because the wash is drying and it's doing what I want. Back to that in a moment. Yeah, I do that a lot. Peel off my finger and the glue peels off paint and I'm like, ah! Accidental weathering. Happy little accidental weathering. Okay. Same thing here. I'm gonna do this. Descender. There we go. That's going right there. That's going right there. Glue, make a mess, burn your fingers, it'll be great. That's how you do it. thing just like the other side be a live stream if it didn't get super glue or wouldn't be a build project something if I didn't get glue on my fingers I just almost glued those fingers together with a little bit of super glue okay that's already dry sweet oh my Alabama all right <clears throat> on this one put glue on the back side Put glue on the thing. Glue on the other thing. Exciting gluing. Glue here. And glue here. And glue right there. Get that glue string out of there. Put some super glue on the thing right here. Put some super glue thing right there and pray to cheeses hopefully this goes where I want it to go yep doing pretty good okay looks like I might need to do some touch up on the color right there Okay, looks like it's going where I want. Yay! Hooray! That in place. There we go. I wasn't totally in place there. Bueno! Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the devil. Way. All right. Look at that. There's a thing. Let's see if I can find a Y connector and light this whole thing up really quick. I really need to go get some more super glue. I forget every time I go out. Whenever I go out, the people always shout, 
Hey, Euler, you forgot your glue. Okay. Here, you watch me wander back over there. Hold on a sec. to go find it. DC connections. I have a bunch of these because of the work that I do in home installation stuff. I have a ton of it sitting around. Okay, I think these are gonna stay in place. Yep. Let us lift it up. Boom. Look at that. Look at that, it looks like a little space castle. Space castle Grayskull or something. Enter a world, okay. Stop goofing around, Jordan. Let me see if I can prop this up with something. Stay there. Okay. is gonna work. No. The wrong voltage. No. Okay. Hold on. Oh, it's probably... My cordage is too... send out too much, hold on, or trying to distribute too much into dense of a cord, whatever that's called. I can't think of what it's called. Testing, hold on a sec, testing, testing. Am I getting lighting over here? Am I really, really, really? After all that, you're not gonna work. Hold on. I already have a problem here, guys. Hold on a sec. That one's working. That's probably why, because that lighting setup was not working. Okay. Well, there's that side. But the other side disconnected, so it didn't want to send the signal out to all of it, or send the power out to all of it. So, already going to have to go with it. Ugh. Things that don't do what I want. Okay. Let's try this again. Let me make sure these cords are not dead either. Sorry, I'm doing jinx. I'm just plugging some things in to make sure the cords that I'm using are not flawed. Nope, that one's good. Okay, that's good. 
Uh, I might have, because if this was flawed, I might have fried the other lights. I hope I didn't. Suck. Okay, interesting. This, I'm not lighting that up, so it might be the connector. Yeah, that works. So it might be that. It might just be the connector. Over done. Hmm, it's not sending enough. Okay, maybe I just need more voltage if I'm doing this. I might need to wire this up differently later because those Y connectors do not want to cooperate. What if I use this splitter? Yep, works with that one. Okay, so it is probably... These don't like it. I don't know why. Gonna have to use this one. A little splitter here. You can get these Y DC Y splitters to make a Y shape. Um, I don't know why those don't want to work on this one. They worked fine on the Bat Cave. Oh, okay. It works. It works now. Did they just overheat? Oh, it's the connection. Oh yeah. <laughs> ah, that's annoying. God, I hate that. Okay, yeah, the connection. I need to go in and glue the connection. Watch this. See that? When I move the cord. Oh, it's so stupid and annoying. Okay. That's the only drawback of using the LED strips in those connectors is they don't like to cooperate. So I'm just going to take this off. Gonna break it off and fix that. This thing is not wanting to cooperate. Yeah, if I just see if I, yeah, ah, that's annoying. It's so annoying. All right, slip that off, and just going to use my knife and push these connections down. See if that'll fix it. I just need to do that. I am kind of pulling on the cord because of the way I set it up, so I'm routing the cord directly out of there, which is probably not helping it, but I might just super glue it in place and then it will do what I want. Oh, I'm not going to zap myself with that low of a voltage and amps. It's fine. Even if I did, it wouldn't hurt. Don't do that, though. time fixing folks this is the reality of what you will probably experience with your own stuff there we go let's see if this will work yep okay stay there super glue to the rescue This doesn't work, I'll have to redo it entirely. That's okay, I'll do that off camera if I have to do that. Prop this up while I do this. Use my flat nose pliers really quick. Okay, stay, please, for the love of everything. <clears throat> I'm gonna put some tape on the back here to hold this in place. So it doesn't wiggle too much.
actually out of duct tape. Yeah, this happens. So I'm actually, I would normally use duct tape and I'm not gonna use electrical tape because it's not gonna stick very well to this foam core. So I'm just gonna use some um, packaging tape to hold this in place to encourage it not to push on that connection and mess with it. So it doesn't, the other side doesn't wobble around like it was doing, it was just too loose. Still getting light. Yes, we are. Again, I check it every time I change something, and even then it didn't stick. So I'm gonna do it to this side too. Then gonna check this side. Yep. And then I'm gonna tape this side as well. Same thing. This is the ugly side of the diorama. It's gonna get covered up eventually, so I'm not super concerned. Stay. Okay. And then I'm gonna recheck this again after I taped it. Yep, we're good. Okay. Now maybe the Y connector will work. Or maybe not. Maybe it's just there might be too much, um, too much trying to spread across too much wire. So if there's not enough current coming from the actual power source, and the wire you're using is too much wire, or it's too much stranded wire, or it's too dense, or a bigger gauge, that current is trying to flow across. Those electrons from that current are trying to flow across all that wire. And if the wire gauge is too big, it's going to have a harder time getting the electrical voltage and the wattage slash current to your end goal. So then we need to go into a smaller gauge of wire that can handle the amps. In this case, the amps are less than an amp, so it doesn't really matter. But if you're dealing with higher, more amps, things that draw like two amps, five amps, 10 amps, like big appliances, then it's a whole different thing. So ignore what I'm saying. If you're dealing with something larger, go consult a manual or an electrician for that. But for these small things, if you use too big of a gauge of wire, and I'm wondering if this wire in these Y connectors is just, it just doesn't want to cooperate. Uh, it looks like it's not too big, but it might just because of the way it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's not copper. Maybe it's uh, just steel wire and it doesn't like that. So I'm gonna see if they'll work now. So maybe the vol there's like a voltage drop when I put all the current into this. Um, so we're gonna just plug this in and see if it'll work now. doesn't like these Y connectors. I don't know why. I've used them before. Maybe it's the current coming out of my wall wart that doesn't, it's just not enough for it. Okay, now well, let's try it again. Uh, with a different cord. Let's see. Maybe grab one more cord from my stash. Hold on. So again, that works by itself. This one works by itself. But when I split them, it really doesn't like it. Okay, it works through that Y connector. Sorry, troubleshooting, troubleshooting, troubleshooting. Is it gonna work here? No, okay, something about this connection, it needs more wattage and more voltage and I'm not gonna do with that. I'm not gonna mess with that right now because I don't feel like calculating that and putting in resistors because I'm trying to keep this simple for you guys. <sighs> I have to put resistors in the line and I don't want to do that. Okay, they work independently. 
Uh, do I have another wall where I can put in? I don't think I do. I think it was my last one right now. All right, well, I got plugs I can plug into these that have raw wire, and then I can parallel them together and then connect them to a new plug, and that's probably what I'll do. So I have plug, just like these black connectors that you saw me use here, I have ones that are plug in, plug in and there's two loose, a positive and a negative on the other end, and a positive negative on the other end, just like this, but they don't have a connection. They're just two loose wires. And then what I'll do is I'll run this over and I'll, I'll solder together the, the positive, solder together the negatives, and then I'll I'll get another I'll get a uh, a uh, actually I'll show you so it doesn't confuse you sorry turn that light on Okay, so that box that I opened up that had these electrical connections in it, I also have um, a lot of things in that box that I can switch out. So, like I said, I have one of these, but doesn't have a connection on the end. It's got two raw wires. I can't simply cut this and do that because the way this wire is designed, the connection goes around. And if I cut it, I won't be able to create the connection, but there's a conversion that comes to two, a positive and a negative. If I bring those over here and I twist those two, two positives together, twist the two negatives together, solder them, and then I can put them inside of this which is a little, um, it's a little DC power plug, little female end. And then I can use a screwdriver. You see how it says positive and negative on there. Undo that, put the negative, put the positive, tighten it back down. And I've got myself a connection that splits into a parallel and at parallel, um, and should work just like this, but convert to the correct, correct connections. Cause this one doesn't. Um, so anyways, that's what I'm going to do. I'll have to do that off screen, but just so you know how I did it and how I resolved it. I'll do that later after I build the box that goes behind this and connects it all. So, fun! Fun, fun. Fun, okay. Unplug these for now. And I'm just gonna set all this aside so I remember to handle that. Or remember what I said on stream so I don't mess it up. this back on now that I know it's going to work. All right. And then we'll finish up some of the painting on that. I'm out of super glue. Okay. Get this in here. Where this belongs. And hold everything in place again. Oh, that needs to go there. Okay. There we go. Okay. One more time. <laughs> I guess they just don't like they just need more current I guess and that does not provide enough current those are those cords that I'm using are built for 18 volt systems uh, for home automation products um, but they work usually just fine on the 12 volt stuff when I go down to the 3 volts those are too big of a cord uh, because there's not enough wattage and current and volts since everything coming through it to get across the density of the metal, the electrons just kind of flow and dissipate and the signal is too weak. 
So, but they usually work on the 12 volt stuff just fine, but it must be that wall wart that I'm using. It's maybe of a lower quality, even though it says it's sending out 12 volts at one amp or, or allows up to a one amp drop, it must not be providing a very consistent flow out from the power source or enough because all the other wall warts I've used work just fine. I don't know why that one's not. So it must just be the quality of it. So like when you go to the gas station, you get those, excuse me, you get these little chargers for your iPhone or for your Android and you go to the gas station and these seem to not send out enough power through your cord or the cord doesn't send out enough power and it takes forever to charge your phone. It's the same concept. So even though these say five volts at like up to one amp on the draw right there, it says five volts up to one amp um, because the parts are made of cheaper quality parts. The actual flow of current coming out is less same like with these it's not copper you know it's and it's not solid core or it's not sheathed very well so there's a dissipation of the electrons and it doesn't work um as well and so it takes like five six hours to charge your phone whereas the apple branded one or the android branded cords take an hour or less because they're of higher quality materials and everything flows better even though it's the same rate it just actually actually flows across the electrons move better um so i've learned this is what i mean i actually know all this stuff i just wasn't explaining it very well when i recorded that video um i had to learn all this stuff because i had to be able to test circuit boards um in home automation to figure out if something got blown or there's a short and i needed to replace a motor um so i know again i know enough to do all this small scale stuff um but that's why i feel like i need to record a part two to my miniature wiring video I think I might call it how to make miniature wiring better and it kind of re-explains some of the things in that video that I flubbed up on a little bit and get more into this other stuff. So yeah, I, you know, it's 12 volts. I could hook it up to my car battery. I don't know what the output is, but yeah, I could grab, actually have a rechargeable, uh, one of those power banks for recharging your car battery. I could hook it up to that. It probably would be okay. <laughs> These, the LEDs I used are actually from a car LED kit, which plug right into your 12 volt system in your car. So I could do that and they shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't blow them out. It shouldn't be too many amps or anything. Um, so maybe I'll do that off screen <laughs> just to test it. But anyways, there is our wall of doom. Let me see what it looks like in the diode. That wash we created is separating. Look at how that looks. It's actually two different tones. It's like bluer down here and purpler up here. Purpler. Okay. Do, 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 do. It's going to sit basically right there. My fat arm out of the way. Do, 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 do. Yeah. I don't know what that noise was, but it was a noise. All right, then when I enclose that and put like some decoration in the back and put lighting in there and make sure everything's actually working correctly, um, it'll be great. Okay. Back to the future. All right, time for some highlight dry brushing. You can see the little blue spots we get in here. Looks otherworldly. There's a lot of grain in there, so my 720p resolution that's being broadcast is kind of not showing it in high res, but it looks cool, I promise. Okay, where is la palette? Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. There it is. And the paints. Okay. I'm gonna put 
put some of this right there. And we're going to put some of this right there. And we're going to get a denser brush. So now I'm going to switch to a denser brush. Like I was describing before, I'm doing subtle details now. I don't want it to be as loud. So I'm going to get this denser brush to do this part. Off. So this is what I used to do the blue wash on the rocks, the baby blue wash. So this is going to be, I'm going to leave the rocks in place because I don't want to go up to the rocks. I want to leave them darker around the edges. So I'm going to kind of pick and choose where I go here. And this is where we, you pack the, the brush with paint and then you remove most of it. <clears throat> so we're going to start with this darker color, of course. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna push my bristles into this, and then I'm just gonna wipe it off. And then I'm gonna actually wipe it off on this. And then we're gonna go in for the kill here. And I just did it on accident over there because I wasn't paying attention where my hand was. That's okay. And there we go. Oh, that looks sick. Okay, I like that. Oh my gosh, that looks cool. It looks like it's glowing. Oh, I can't wait to take high-res pictures of this and show you guys. That looks very glowy. Yes! Success. Here, let me see if I can... Yeah, it changes the color a lot when I zoom in. You can see the difference there. I like it a lot, I like it a lot, I like it, okay. If I use the chip brush, because the bristles are, are very random on the chip brush, I, would, I might be getting big streaks that I don't really want. That's why I'm switching to the denser brush. I see a bristle came out here, take that off of there. And I, I'm not going to paint down here just to keep the effect of the shadow on the vertical face here. And maybe I'll paint a little bit just to blend it. This is where you have to be patient and just go a little bit at a time. with this. I'm actually thinking of dioramas I want to use this exact same paint job on in the future. Yeah, it's looking almost, there's like a yellow-orange tone it's adding in the camera that's not there. Um, so, yeah, I'll have to take some high-res images and switch out the thumbnail here at the end. Because it's not, the camera is not doing it justice. This is looking very happy. This is looking very happy.
And I'm noticing there's some areas here, <clears throat> it's hard to see again in the camera. Right here, there's some pooled blue and over here and on the steps, I'm gonna leave those, uh, I'm gonna try not to dry brush as much of this into those areas because I think it adds a contrast. It's really pretty. Excuse me. Troy, yeah, 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 probably. <laughs> it's always fun to experiment. Fat Red Foo, go take care of your friend. Go be a brother born for when there is distress. Already see a few spots that could use a little going over or a second time. Sour candy. It's my Ned Flanders quote. Fine and dandy like sour candy. But like I said, the Simpsons raised me. This looks a lot cooler than I thought I was going to. It looks cooler than I thought. If you're watching in the future times, what do you think about this color scheme? You think it looks good or you think it looks stupid? Or something else? Maneuver this around a bit. Get a cool angle on this. There we go. Just hanging on the wall like that. 
Yeah, this would make a really cool piece of wall art if we just did the texture like that. Hey, thanks for the idea. <laughs> that would be a cool, just wall hanging. I might have to do that. You should do it too, though. Is your idea. Yeah, maybe I'll pull out my black light at the end of the stream. I have a couple, I think. Oh, you know what? Actually, I let somebody borrow it. Maybe I can, actually, I have a bulb. Maybe I can find a thing to plug in the bulb. I have a black light flashlight and I have a black light bar light, but I think I've let them be borrowed. So, um... Yeah, but I have a bulb back here. If I can find one of my clip-on lights, I can plug it in and see what it looks like under a black light. Sometimes, it's funny actually, looking at your dioramas under a black light can show you where you messed up in your paint too, um, or where there's inconsistencies or flaws you didn't notice. So if you want to be an ultra perfectionist, um, you can set your diorama up under a black light to correct it. I have done that before. I did it for fun one time and found a bunch of things. I was like, oh, I missed that spot. I didn't even realize that, that was that was a thing I didn't do right. That glue didn't dry right. You know, I found a bunch of weird little things like that. So it can also be used as a tool. You'd be surprised too if you pointed point at an action figure. <clears throat> How many things on an action figure you can see that are not actually made of the same material? Um, it reveals certain plastics will react differently and reflect light and the uh, sort of subsurface scattering on the plastic, if that's the right term or not, I don't know. I know that's what skin does. But uh, it can actually reveal the different types of plastic. And uh, uh, I find that with action figure painting, it can be helpful to know which type of plastic it's made of because the paint will behave differently on it. So if you take a UV light and turn all your lights off and put an action figure under it, you might go, oh, I didn't realize the this section was actually made of um, ABS, this section was made of PVC, and that section was made of PET. Because you might actually choose a different paint if you know that. I know that in some cases that can be very helpful. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the other color here and just go over some spots. Um, make sure my brush doesn't have paint that's going to immediately come off of it. A little bit like that's okay. And this brush is falling apart. Pack this with paint. And this will be the final highlight as long as it looks. Yep, there we go. Yeah, baby. 
and I'm not gonna do the whole thing like I just did. I'm just gonna do maybe edges and little piles of detail and then blend it outward. So like little spots like this and these edges. Oops, got a little streak there I didn't want. That's fine. Stay there. Thanks again guys for being here for so long. Thank you guys for the likes. Thanks for the love. Very much appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Very much appreciate it. Appreciate you guys for being here, putting up with my crazy presentation style. And all that jazz. A little bright right there, that's okay. amazing what you can do with a brush and some acrylic paint. What do you guys think? You like the way that I went with this? It's actually very much like, I envisioned it a little bit more even and muted uh, with richness, but going with that um, not too hard of a dry brush on that first layer got this really ultraviolet looking look, which I wasn't expecting to do, but I'm very happy it turned out that way.
getting there. Almost done with this. You know, it's funny, I'm just looking at this, it almost looks like, I don't mean to sound kind of like dark here, but like burn victim flesh, but in purples and blacks. Like, you know, if you can imagine somebody whose burns have healed from like severe third degree or second degree burns, and you get the skin tone and then like reds and some blues and such like that under it. I feel like this kind of looks like that, but everything's in magentas, purples, blues, and blacks. And uh, like ultraviolet. It's pretty unexpectedly cool. See how this tone, I'm bringing it around, this tone looks a lot like the tone on the uh, poles, or the gas pumps. It's all part of the plan. That's why when I held those paints up and looked at the pieces I already painted, that's what helped me select it, as you remember here at the beginning of the stream. Oops. types of things help it to blend together well yeah night wolf i will definitely try to take some final photos like that get everything like you know studio full studio setup where i black out everything and then just light it <clears throat> with the lights in the diorama and then maybe some directional lighting yeah i'm looking forward to taking those kind of photos of this because i think it's going to look really really cool really cool Oh, that looks, wow, that looks really cool. Okay, let me see if I can show you kind of what this is looking like. Um, let me see if I turn it off. Maybe not as harsh. See the tones in there? flashlight over here. Where'd it go? Hello. Had it a minute ago. Oh, right here. This is actually a regular flashlight, but it's gonna read differently on this. It's almost, see what I mean? It's almost reading like a black light when I put harsh white light on it. That's just a white light. Let me turn off all of the studio lights. Yeah, it's really hard to read this. The colors, my camera doesn't like it <laughs> because of the resolution. Um, but it's, yeah, I gotta take still images of it. <clears throat> okay. Very happy with that. All right. So we got rocks to put down, and we got flocking and other flocking. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be cool. All right, well, I'll have to do some of that off screen, and then we'll do a little bit when I come back to it next time around. Let's put a couple of guys in there. <laughs> All right. Oh, you're gonna 
guess it's stable for me. Cord came out. Borg. There we go. Okay, here are our Cosmic Legions. Yeah, I think this color scheme is gonna go really well with these guys, because it's like complimenting them. I didn't really mean to do that, but I kind of thought about it, but I think subconsciously it just sort of happened. Yeah, we put a, a background back there. I'll like drop a green screen and put like a, a planet back there. Do all this, black it out. Turn on the lighting in the diorama, finish painting and washing all this stuff. Gonna look pretty sweet. Behold, space. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> okay, I think that just about does it for this stream. Um, Thank you guys for joining me. If you're watching in the future times, thank you for watching this long. Um, this will be available uh, after October, by the way. I am taking all the Diorama live streams uh, after the first stream and making them, uh, putting them in the members only archive. So after October 1st, I've already done it with the first three builds that we did. Um, and then uh, after October 1st, when we finish the stream, I'm gonna leave it up for about seven or eight days. And then it's going to go to uh, members only archive. So, so uh, the first stream will stay up. If somebody wants to continue watching it that hasn't seen it, they can join the members only section, or they have to tune in for every live stream after that, uh, within eight days of me doing it to catch it, um, because it just makes sense uh, for how many people watch it and when they watch it. Um, so I'm just kind of shifting. That's one of the things I'm shifting around in the channel, and I'm just letting you guys know, so that if you miss one of the streams starting after October. Um, you have eight days to watch it if you're not a channel member, and then it's going to members in the archive. So members can access, I think it's 73 hours of live streams that I've done that are only accessible by them, um, as well as the additional content that they have that's only for them. And so uh, that's one of the ways I'm reorganizing the channel, and I'm going to focus on doing more produced videos for um, the public uh, the non-members, I mean, you're all public, right? But the non-members, uh, I'm going to do actual produced videos. They'll obviously get to see those first as well. But doing more produced videos, I'll still be doing my live streams, but they're just going to revert to uh, members-only archive after eight days. That's for every live stream after the first one in a specific build. So you can go back and see the first stream. And again, if you want to watch the rest and you haven't seen it, that's in the members only archive section. Any member can access that too. It's not exclusive to a higher tier or anything like that. So thank you guys for being here on a third. Well, it's a Thursday night. If you're watching in the future time, it's whatever day or night you're watching. Um, yeah, you guys are awesome. It was nice to hang out with you guys and talk about uh, influences and childhood trauma. And uh, we'll see you guys. I'm actually going to be doing a stream this Sunday too. Uh, we'll see you guys on Sunday. Have a great weekend. Be safe. To make the world a bad place, make it a good place, you know, all that stuff. <laughs>